The mission is to kill Chaos. That's all I know. When are we gonna fight Chaos? All I care about is seeing Chaos dead. Looks like Chaos has been waiting for us. Chaos. We're here to kill Chaos. What about Chaos? That Chaos doesn't exist? The Chaos Shrine. Just one. Is it true you made a deal with Chaos? Chaos exists. I knew it. I told you. And where there's a crystal, there's chaos. Come on. Are you chaos? You told us he made a deal with chaos. And where? Where did this desperate urge to eradicate chaos come from? Chaos takes hold. Me? Chaos? Chaos. This world needs chaos! Chaos? It's Friday! There's no chaos on Fridays! Can't be... Can't be any chaos! We all have oxygen. You know, all the good things. Welcome back, everybody. I hope we're all doing amazing. We are all about to have a wonderful time. You know, that's the wrong button. I'm firing on all, all cylinders today. All cylinders. Somewhat. Maybe. And I'm definitely, definitely not still putting my ears in. I don't know why. Like, it's a thing. Just, it, like Kevin said, it's Friday. We're all feeling a little bit lazy. Dave. Dave, I appreciate the five gifted. And I hope you have a magical choo-choo weekend. And you don't have to mind Pyroy. Pyroid just likes fire, okay? They want to see the world burn. Hence the reason they love the chaos emotes so much. Weird Dreams says, Echo said, OMG, I miss Weird Dreams and I need her to say hi. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Kevin in with the gifted sub. This one went to Steampunk Angel. Welcome back. Welcome back to Steampunk Angel. I appreciate that gifted sub. Thank you, Kevin. You know I'm just going to throw it right back in your face, though, right? Crypto um, says 4X. I like 4X. You're going to like this. You're going to like this. It is... Uh, I've had... Um, early access for a little while now and I've already put you know 20 25 hours into it 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 has legs so in the past couple years we've seen the release of several forex titles and they've been how do you put it meh you know they just there was something missing well millennia has it millennia scooped it up there's a lot of people like Doff um, earlier says, well, it looks like a Civ clone. 
any forex, your any historical forex, people are going to be able to, and they're going to compare to Civ. But I don't think it's fair necessarily to Civ or Millennia in this case. There are some similarities. Don't get me wrong, but there are some things that Millennia turns on its head and completely injects new ideas into the forex genre. Ideas that work. And, you know, it's going to have that Paradox flavor to it, right? So I'm very excited to see how Paradox breathes life into it over the years. Yeah, like, uh, like who knows, yo says, Paradox supports good games. They absolutely do. And you know, once you invest the time to learn them, that they're going to continue to support it. So it's not like you're the game that you enjoy playing is just going to go by the wayside. If I lurk, it's because I'm at the doctor's office. <laughs> Hope everything's okay there, Steampunk. The similarities in the interface um, is what Doff is talking about. The what's great is there is familiar familiarity for those of us who are fans of the forex genre, but there is so much new. How do I put this? I was working on these words yesterday for various reasons. Um, there are changes both blatant and subtle that Millennia manages to pull off again successfully. Now, everybody knows, and we've talked about it on this channel before, um, I will never, I'm never going to, <clears throat> I'm never going to accept a sponsorship for a title that I don't believe in, right? I'm never, I'm never going to present you and say, hey, this title is good, unless I truly believe in it. Um, but I would definitely, definitely take sponsorship for a game like Millennia. Doff says, the closest I've really gone to Forex is Heroes of Might and Magic. Oh man, that was a great one, wasn't it, Doff? Had you tried Age of Wonders? Oh, Doff, Doff is lurking while dinner. Enjoy your dinner. We got an early pandiculate and a drink in from Max. Oh. I appreciate you, Max. Cheers to you. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. Um, so far, I have not completed a single game because uh, it's also has, it has that paradox flavor of being every game that you sit down with is a commitment. Like you're gonna be playing it for a while. Whiskey, getting that sweet Perrier action going. Welcome back, Whiskey. <laughs> Weird Dream says, Kevin said I get a free back massage before stream. <laughs> Oh, oh behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Is your entire room decorated like the background or is it more empty slash full? Asked Dorora 8. Um, it has more of it. Like I have another um, another poster similar to those right over there. Um, it was the one that the mods gifted me. I have shelves that have books, many leather bound books, lots of nerd paraphernalia. Is that the word for it? Paraphernalia? I don't know. It's more like Paraphernalia doesn't seem doesn't seem like the, the the perfect word, but I've got the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I have Olaf because you can't go anywhere without Olaf. I have many Lego sets. 
I just realized I have to read the new Dragon's novel. That's also sitting there. I have an old school dictionary. Nerdcore aesthetic, says Whiskey. I like it. Knickknacks? I don't know. I don't like knickknacks. I'm not big on knickknacks. I knickknacks to me, they don't have a purpose, right? I guess some of it would be considered knickknack. Rob Roy, welcome back. It's good to see you. This bird keeps bringing sticks to me. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Did Echo have a haircut today? No, no haircut today. I did do a self trim on Wednesday. Crypto said that reminds me, my friend found a book from 1917 in the school's library. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Knickknack patty wax. <laughs> That's the end of the knickknack paddywhack song? Oh no, it's actually there's there's a bird on Kevin's porch. <laughs> I I don't think the bird is bringing you sticks. I think the bird's trying to make a nest and you're in its way. <laughs> Greek bowl with the five months. Thank you, Greek bowl. Oh, that's right. I need to make sure this is in pin this. So if anybody comes in asking about the game, make sure you point them to the pinned comment. Whoop. Pin it. Manually unpinned. There we go. Golden Creations Hawaii, welcome back. Why am I not surprised that Kevin is breaking the bird's nest? It's Kevin! It's Kevin! <laughs> I like to think that it thinks... I like you. Here is a stick. You like stick. <laughs> oh. 20 MG5, hi, welcome. Welcome in. <laughs> oh. Apparently, who knows yo is um, Snow White, and the birds are just flocking to to him, bringing bringing him sticks aplenty. <laughs> All right, we're ready to get this going. For those of you new here, we like to do a roll call, and we do this roll call to thank people for spending their most valuable resource, and in this case, it's their time. And as a way of saying thank you for spending their time here, we do the roll call where we uh, we say hello to everybody. No, I do not want life insurance. Thank you. Um, yeah, and all you have to do to be included in the roll call is say something in the chat. That's it. Just say hi or boop. A lot of people like to say the last game that they played. That's always a fun one. I appreciate the lurk, Brian. Rem said they played the new Mind Over Magic um, to see the new update. What'd you think, Rem? Rob Roy's playing Brotato. 
Yes. <laughs> Welcome and happy Friday. Starting off with 20 MG5. Anti-social Leon. Bow ties are cool. Brian Matt 42. Crypto Raider. David Perm. Dave Hammer 2003. Dravy 81. Delahanna of Light. Golden Creations Hawaii. Jarifa 2. Minu Zeta. Mr. Brain. Otaku 74. Pyroy Maniac. Queen Calero. Bow. Curtsies. Remy May. Rob Roy 865. Rosewood 609. Shane 170,807. Steampunk Angel. Stream Elements The Bot. Who knows yo? With Love Sparrow. Liz is here. Everybody say hi, Liz. Zoldan or Lamo. Welcome. 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 Rem says, starting a new game is nice. There's three difficulty modes and scrambling room requirements is a toggle without having to go into custom settings. And I love the option to force your starting teachers to have a specific element wand and then roll within that wand for its traits. Otaku's been playing Hearthstone, but to get to the WoW mount for the anniversary event. I wonder how the WoW numbers are doing these days. I do wonder. Because I just recently opened up Battle.net for probably the first time in six months. And the only reason I opened it, the only reason why I opened it was to uninstall WoW because it normally just stays installed. Let's go here. Here we go. Angry Forest, welcome back. Did you miss roll call? You did. You did. It was it was getting a little sleepy in chat. It was getting a little sleepy. Now I have no idea where we need to go as far as uh the camera so please let me down or let me uh let me know this probably gives gives something away to some people <laughs> if you know you know uh, i guess we'll start it at 50 i have no idea the soundtrack in this game is magnificent by the way uh, I'm thinking about the screen. This is where the army screen is. Maybe down here? We'll have to see. We're going to start a new game because I want to show it to you from the rip. Now, this is an early access title. So I can only show you up to a certain point um, because there's different embargo dates. So we cannot go past the sixth age. If it looks like I'm about to click the button to go next after the sixth age, everybody scream and tell me to stop. <laughs> Cause you just get in the, the rhythm where you just keep hitting one more turn. We're gonna go to a custom game because you know, I wanna show you the, the coolness. Now, in other Forex games, each nation or civilization is sort of differently focused. In the, I, I gotta turn it down a little bit. Am I the only one who thinks it's a smidge loud? We'll try 25. I gotta figure out what the disconnect is from here. I'll try 40. Because I want you to be able to hear it. Okay, um, so when you're when you're looking at the new game, all of these, for the player, they play the same. Now, if I, for instance, select Rome, it's going to default to their starting bonus, which is discounted envoys. 
If I go to India, non-combatants equal get more movement. But you can change these at will. So that's kind of cool. Um, I think today we're going to be America. So I need to assign this one so I can pick America. Not the United Kingdom. The United States. Jay Wonder says the Civ Rhythm. I mean, that's, that's true. Cybernetic Overlord said, oh boy, Paradox blessing us with another 4X game. Yes. And the difference is we've seen a lot of 4X games in the past couple years or several um, bigger titles. This one has legs. This one's going to make it. Um, it's great. I think we'll go eight players continents because it's kind of the pretty standard gameplay. And I'm going to go with starting with a new scout unit because I think in most 4X titles, starting with it's true, just like it's true in Millennia. Starting with early, being able to scout more in the beginning really sets you up for the mid game. Uh, is that it? Yeah, um, the difficulty we're playing middle of the road. Adept. There's also, it goes all the way up to Grandmaster. So where this game differs, I'm going to try to give it to you in a couple of points so you have something to look forward to as we play, is there are multiple ages that you can enter, but how most historical, they, they go in a, a linear pattern. This one does not. So when we get to the third age, we'll be able to see, or when we get to the second age, we'll be able to see the advancing age. It could be one of a plenty of different options of where we could end up as far as ages go. Otaku with the tinnitus. Too much time in the server room. I feel you on that tinnitus front. All right, so uh, is this start okay? I'll be honest, I do not love it. We do have some cattle. We have... Some of these elky things, some grapes. We have one forest, though. I don't see any mines. Yeah, I think this is an I think this is a restart. I think I see plenty of growth opportunity here, especially with all this wonderful grassland. Like the farms would just pop off. But there's no there's very little production. We'd have to manually squeeze out production. Yeah, let's start another one. Whoop. And this time, since I've already shown you that, um, we're just going to go to Quick Start. And I'm going to select the United States. And pick my scout unit and go. Angry Force says the game's got diggery-doo. Dave, have a great weekend. Enjoy the trains. All right, at least this one has... Oh, my... But no resources? All right, so we have one tile worth of cotton and one hill? Lots of forest, though. Ugh. Nope. I want a decent start because I don't want to be mucking through the early and mid game before I before I show you the you know be, so the game is worthwhile enough to show you. So we make those gains. Rem says Echo's being picky. I am being a little picky. I'm not trying to look for a like a phenomenal start. I just want a decent start. 
Oh, so maybe... I don't think there's anywhere... Because I want you to be able to see the minimap. And when you select units, that goes in the middle. Kevin? Kevin in with another gifted sub. Zoldan says, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate you. I'm going to just throw them right back into your channel. But we can play this game, Kevin. Um, Zoldan says, adept. He didn't start at the highest possible difficulty? No. The good old paradox restart loop. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? What do we have here? Oh, what did I hit? B? Nope. P? Nope. There it goes. All right. Now, this is this is decent. We only have two resources. One of them's cattle. We'll be able to grab some leather and some meat from it. We have some cotton. We also have a hill. We have some forest. We have some... We don't have a river. So, growth will be a little bit slower, but I'm fine with this. I am fine with this. All right. Now, I like to start with the early um, scout. And this is this scout here. So it gives us an advantage when it comes to exploration. And I think we're going to go straight down into the middle. Because it looks like this might be coastline. So I'm going to take our warband and start circling. Oh, no. This is just a small lake. Lots of grassland, I just noticed. For having no rivers... That's pretty good. W Slayer. Welcome. Jarifa. In with the three months. Thank you, Jarifa. And this war band will take off west. Notice that there's three slots down here. And this is great because um, you can put three different units in one army. And it's expandable through research. What do we got down here? Some more rice? Oh, I'm liking this. All right, let's choose our first technology. This is what the age screen looks like. Now, right now, we're going to be going from the age of stone into the age of bronze. Next time when we're in age of bronze, there'll be multiple ages here. Because the path of history is not necessarily set until certain things end up in the world. First time chatter, W Slayer saying hello. Hi back. Echo, you're doing the celebration Sunday, right? Liz and I are discussing things. Yes. We're going, uh, we're doing our 5,000 follower celebration on Sunday from 11 to 11. Professor Sapling, hello. Um, there's a couple of options here. Well, there's literally five different options here. We need to research three techs before we can start getting into the Age of Bronze. Looking at the map, we do have a reason to grab a plantation because of the cotton. We have already have the research for pasture. But it requires 16 improvement points. Improvement points are down here. I'm glad you can still sort of see them. Jarifa says, I'll be here from 11 to 11. Thank you, Jarifa. The DZM. Welcome back. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Bold move, Cotton. <laughs> Let's see how that one turns out. Whiskey says, that reminds me of our first 24-hour stream. Man, no doubt. What did I make it? 16 hours? Didn't work out well. Didn't work out well. So I don't necessarily think we have to get plantation in this start setup. Because if we work this with a plantation, um, it would be for two wealth. Whereas if I just put a pasture here, we're going to get leather and meat for wealth and food. And this is another one of the things that Millennia does really well that is different. All these goods that we're going to be able to harness and gather for our nation. You can build production chains. In other words, I could start making um, logs. Or for instance, I could start getting timber from the forest. 
once you do that, you can take those logs, turn them to planks. Then you can turn the planks into paper. You can turn the paper into like textbooks and stuff for education. Like it gets ridiculous. And each one of them is going to amp up your, your nation, your capital. Soriel Blackfeather in with the eight months says, Ooh, I've heard some noise about this game lately. Good things. Very good things. Yes, absolutely. I've got about 20, 25 hours in it. And I'm very excited about the future. All right, let's go. Um, so we know we don't have to get pastures very soon. So I think in this case, I'm going to go with tribal elders because I want to unlock the building. Now, something that um, can be a little wonky to explain is the difference between buildings and improvements. Improvements are out here on the map. Things like the pastures and the plantation. And you'll eventually build things like kilns and logging camps and all these sort of things. Those are improvements and they use this resource here, your improvement resource. Buildings are inside of here. Right now, we don't have any buildings. But these buildings require production. You can see up here in Seattle, we have two production per turn. And we have one improvement points per turn. So these are where our yields sit. We have some two knowledge, two culture. This is wealth. This is food. This is influence. The domains, we're going to get into this in a little bit. Um, that's another thing that Millennia does different. Doff says cotton should ha not have a high value so early, whereas leather should have a high value. Um, leather does have a high value starting off too. Now, where that sort of changes is where those where you, what you do with those production changes or production. I'm going to go with the town center because I want the extra government XP. And that's when I guess we'll have the quick discussion on this screen over here. Um, these are your domains. Right now, we're getting two government XP per turn. If I get 30, when I get the 30, I can spawn a settler using the domain power. The domain, in this case, is the government domain. We also have, in this case, tribal government cards under it. And it has its own sort of tree. Nope, that's not the right button. There we go. Thank you. Um, and it has its own tree. So you have to make the decision of whether or not you're going to advance through here or if you're going to spend your experience on, for instance, in this case, Settler. But you'll eventually have a lot of different domains and each will have a bunch of different domain powers. I just want to give you that brief little introduction on it because um, it does have a big impact later. All right, I'm going to take our scout... We still have a little bit of movement here. It looks like this might be blocked off by mountains, which makes our place really defensible. All right, where are we going? Maybe we follow the river? Well, this little dude is going up north. Oh, good for us. The tribal camp. Tribal camps are good. You may know them as goody huts. And that's where that meets up. So I'll send this scout over here. More cotton. Iceland, I appreciate the lurk. We're four turns away from tribal elders. Culture is going to be another thing we talk about. Remember, we're gaining culture points and knowledge. Culture, once we fill up the bar, we get to use one of these cultural powers, which are sort of similar to the domain powers, except these are typically very strong. I'm also keeping an eye on these um, improvement points. These are the current improvements that we have. And we'll unlock. Eventually, this screen fills up like this part of the whole, of the whole screen. 
I want to save up for a pasture for 16. So I'm going to hit control left click. So it gives us a reminder. Let's find this out. Here we go. The machines and tool used in this village are unlike any other. They serve the same purpose, but are designed with completely unique ideas. We can get plus five knowledge or plus five improvement points. Angry Forest in with a gifted sub. This one went to Iceland 99. Thank you, Angry. Anxious Blight in with the follow. Welcome. I appreciate you. Cybernetic Overlord says, I love how the game feels like a sieve, but it's 100% a paradox game and 100% a different beast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Angry with another gifted sub. This one went to Professor Sapling. Thank you again, Angry. You do too much. I appreciate you. In this case, I think I wanted the knowledge. I am excited about getting that pasture down. That pasture is going to be big for us, but being able to advance faster is just too strong. And five knowledge goes a long way. Now we've almost completed that tech. Everyone needs an E. <laughs> oh. All right, let's take this fella and start working down to the west. And we'll keep going to the east with this one. And I'll try to find a path south. But this mountain range is really holding us up. Look at all these hills. Keep an eye out for a possible second where we're going to settle our first settler. Anxious Blight says, I love your auction not included videos. My girlfriend and I love to watch them together. Love I could catch a stream. Thank you very much, Anxious Blight. And welcome. Welcome, Kevin! Kevin in with five gifted subs. I appreciate you, buddy. Let's go up on the... Oh, my. Look at this mountain range. All right, so we'll hook over in here. Well, at least we know... I should have went west. It looked like it opened right over here. Maybe we'll come back through here. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. All right, this, let's go right up and around. So far, no sightings of barbarians. This is good. All right, so we completed tribal elders, which gives us the council building, which is going to be good when we finish up the town center. We'll go right into the council building and I will shift click to queue it up. Angry in with another gifted sub. This one went to Anxious Blight. <laughs> Igers. No doubt, no doubt. Remember, we try to keep the uh, the language PG, PG-13. But I am, uh, I am well familiar with that struggle. <laughs> All right, so we have that queued up. Let's go check our research. Now, we could get scouting next. It would give us another scout. We could get defenses, which gives us a free archer and gives us the ability to, to create archers. Plus, it adds additional defenses at the capital and our town. Farming unlocks the improvements of farming and the improvement of plantation, plus the food stockpile building. I think we're going to go workers. Workers is going to give us plus eight improvement points right off the rip, allow us to levy our production and turn it in to improvement points, and it gives us access to the clay pit, which I'm not too concerned about. But those eight improvement points will get that pasture online a lot quicker. All 
All right, let's get up over here. Oh, there's another one. Happy to see you for sure. Nowhere to go. Now we have our culture power. See how we filled the bar? So we have access to either create a town or local reforms. As we unlock more domains, we will get more culture powers associated with those domains. We're going to be creating a town. The other option would be to do local reforms, which gives us um, basically boosts all of our regions, their, their production. Creating a town is another thing that, again, Millennia does different. Anxious Blight, I appreciate the lurk. Igers, don't, you don't have to worry about apologizing. It's no big deal. I appreciate you. Um, da, 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 da. So when we, I can build a town anywhere inside of our borders and even up to one outside of our borders. All of the improvements... I'm trying to put... How do I put this? Every improvement around your town makes the town more valuable by generating wealth. I don't want to put it in this forest here because this is our first forest that we're going to be able to actually harvest. So it makes me think about going over here. I don't want to sacrifice that hill. So I'm thinking about this tile here because I'm going to have a mine here. I'm going to have a plantation here. Yeah, we're going to go here. And now we've got a nice little town. Towns also Yay. add some city militia. Angry forest. And who knows you. Both of you, calm down. You're yesing too hard. Thank you both. Who knows you in with a gifted sub. This one went to Lucky Wolf. Angry forest with five gifted subs. Counterpoint says whiskey. Don't calm down. <laughs> All right. This also will help us expand our borders because the town will increase our um, influence pressure. Right now, you don't see it because we just put down the town, but this is the influence pressure being pushed out. I'm going to see how it updates next turn. See how now, now we've got more pressure going this way. The DZM. The DZM and with five gifted submarinos. Chat, you're yesing too hard. It's a nice, relaxing Friday. All right, we're going to move here. More mountains. What is this? Marble? All right, what do we got? Lost war band unit is hiking through the wilderness. They're wary and looking for help. We can bring them with us, which gives us another war band. That's good. Or give them directions, which will give us warfare experience, which will unlock another domain. Straight up value-wise, the war band is more valuable because there is a domain power under warfare to spawn war bands, but it costs more than 10 XP. So we're going to grab the war band. More units also equals better. And then I'm going to take this war band because I don't want them to slow around. Our scout, our scout has a movement of 30, where the warband only has a movement point of 20. And I'm going to send this warband up here to meet up with this one to make them stronger. Angry! Angry forest, I'm about... I'm about to go lumber. I'm about to become a lumberjack. I'm about to raise the entire forest. Ten more gifted subs. Kevin says, yeah, you're not my real dad. Lucky Wolf says, I love the new emote. The cloak is amazing. Done by the incredible, uh, incredible Liz. I appreciate the lock, the lurk, Rob Roy. First time chatter tank. Thanking DZM for the gifted sub. We like it when people say thank you around here. Appreciate you. What's on 84? Also first time chatter saying grazie. 
Appreciate you. All right, let's get let's get to it. Um, yeah, so I don't want I want the scout to be able to move and move fast, and they can't do it if they are carrying around this warband with them. So we're gonna meet them. We're gonna join those up. Soil Black Feather, welcome back. All right, let's get up on this hill. Nothing here, so now we can move over. We might be able to join up by going north here while this guy goes this way. That might be better. And then this guy's over here. Moving in forest, cross rivers, on hills, of course, costs more movement points than just flat land. Tanks is enjoying a rumble watching this game. How is it so far? I, uh... I haven't been able to put it down. <laughs> I've, I've, I, if I wasn't as busy as I am, you know, doing other, you know, content stuff, I would have, I'd have twice as many hours in it already. Uh, we'll go north. I don't know where this cuts off. We've got some desert here. Oh, okay. Well, this is going to hook around. I'm going to go through here to see if we can find a way in and around those mountains. I, we need a lot more of those tribal camps. Those tribal camps are huge when it comes to early momentum. We have six improvement points. We're still working workers. So here's what I was talking about earlier. We now have 12 government XP. We could put it into tribal farming, or we could unlock another government domain power in the raised tribal army. I don't want to do that, though. Why? Because I want to save up the 30 experience to get the settler. I appreciate you, Lucky Wolf. Yeah, it's it's going to be good. And the fact that it has Paradox behind it... <laughs> We're going to be playing this one for years. Uh, forest is going to be slow, but that's okay. This guy will eventually catch up. We need to find our second settling site. So we're going to hook around here with that scout. How do you feel it compares to Humankind or Civ 4, Civ 5? Um... Millennia does things different than any 4X game. There's a lot of concepts that I think are just flat out better. Such as the production chains, the ages. It gives each age, it's, it feels like each age is its own sort of little game. Civ has obviously been being developed for 20, 30 years, right? So there is some of that, uh, that, that flair that Civ gets. Humankind, I was able to put it down, I guess is the way to say it. I haven't been able to put this down, if that makes sense. This has that one more turn. It has that I want to keep playing it sort of hook. Whereas I did not get that hook out of Humankind. And I don't know what Humankind was missing. But the folks at C-Prompt Games, the, the developers of this, um, they found it. A Lost Scout Cavalry unit is camping out in the wilderness trying to get their bearings. There's another instance where we could get Exploration XP or we could get another Scout Cavalry. We are eventually going to get exploration xp and we're gonna have all those domains but for right now i want the unit so we're gonna grab another scout cavalry unit and then this guy is gonna go boogie off oh maybe this is where our second city is our second region the scout will wander off over there and i will keep this warband local swarzes says hi everyone Tank is asking, do I think it's fresh enough to compete with Civ? I don't think it has to compete with Civ. I don't think it has to. Uh, the amount of choices 
that you can make from turn one in millennia is a lot greater. And in that, that theme continues on in millennia. It's a, it has a different style to it. It executes the Forex genre a little different. I would say millennia is more grand strategy than Civ, which makes Civ easier to pick up um, for more casual players. Whereas millennia straight up says, hey, this is a game that it's uh, like a easy to learn, hard to master sort of thing. All right, where this war band? Let's keep going up. Another one. Okay, this is we're getting some good boons here, but I need to stick around because we're about to see barbarians. I cannot believe we have not found a barbarian camp yet. I'm going to choose the route of more vision instead of going through the forest. And there's another one. Can you make a port in this game? Yes. Harbors and you can upgrade those. We're going to get into it. We're not going to stop for a few hours. We got several hours in front of us, so we're going to be able to get firmly into the mid game. So you're going to be able to see a lot of content. Uh, 16. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on improvement points. And you got to get in the habit of keeping an eye up here. Because, for instance, it's saying, hey, you could spend, you could spend government XP. And this government XP will keep climbing. So you don't want to miss out on being able to activate stuff. Uh, I spoke too soon, didn't I? We have a barbarian up here. All right, so... In Forex games, normally the combat just happens just like it did. You can see how much health we have. You can see how much health it has. Millennia goes a little bit further and gives the option. We could right-click this and not go any further. But if you wanted to, you can click into it and see how the combat sort of ended up. And you can look at the units and how much damage they're doing. And now at this basic level, because it's just one unit on one unit, it looks pretty self-explanatory. You also have a combat log if you really want to get into some detail. But when there is five, six units on each side, then you get to see where things like having archers in the back line or having range units on the back line and having different leaders in it, 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 definitely, it definitely starts amping it up. Slayer says the combat view is the worst thing about the game, but you can skip it. I think, yeah, I think it's one of those to each their own sort of things because depending on the battle, I may skip it. But a lot of times I want to go peek in and find out why things happened the way they did. Because you have to think about it. Think about this. Because people are going to invariably compare it to another title, right? You could have just... They could have just did it right here. Which they did. So you can completely skip it. And still get the same effect that you get in every every Forex title. So I think it's an added benefit. Not necessarily subtract from the game. SC Terran Marine... Are you going to try to get to the Age of Hero or any variant ages? Yes, we're going to try to. Um, and it sounds like you already know a little bit about the game, so we'll see how that goes. I appreciate that follow. Dark Myth 91 also with the follow. Welcome in. All right. Let's go. I'm not worried. We are stronger than that barbarian. But I'm glad we're stuck there now. It'll give this guy an opportunity to, to join up. But that means there's a barbarian camp somewhere around here. I am going to move because I want to get this um, tribal camp. Massive temple pyramid lays before us. Its contents and purposes are unknown. Warfare XP or exploration XP. Notice, after that combat, we've unlocked 
another domain because we earned one warfare experience. Every battle you're in, you gained one warfare experience. And I think between the two, we're about to have plenty of warfare experience. So I think I'm going to take the exploration. Partly because it'll be good to have a few of those points in the bank, but also because it'll allow me to show it to you. Now, we have three domains. The exploration domain, we have one power currently, and it can spawn a scout when we have 20. And the warfare domain, we have the ability to spawn volunteers, which is a warband, for 25 experience. We could have gone either way on that, but I just wanted to be able to show you more of the domains quicker. Because the domain system is one of the things that Millennia does different that players are going to have to understand how to use. Uh, we'll probably back up onto this hill and let this barbarian keep driving into us and we'll get a defensive bonus for being here. All right, let's go. Oh, we got another one. Give me the goodies! Spawn an archer or 10 warfare experience. So I just showed you how we could spawn one warband and it costs 25 experience. Or we can spawn an archer that we don't even have the ability to create yet. We're definitely going to spawn the archer. And then I'm going to take that archer and I'm going to send them back. And it's going to take a little while to get there. Actually, no, I'm going to link them up with these fellas here. The problem with archers is by themselves, they're fairly weak. So we're going to have to be careful there. Is this a mountain? Or am I going to be able to cross this? I don't want to, like, I don't mind the scouts getting far away from home. But I don't want our primary warrior units getting far away. Zoldan says, um, it would seem to me that the warfare experience jump of 10 would help more. The reason why I thought this is because each combat's only giving one experience. So a 10 XP boost is significant. It is comparatively, but remember, I can get another experience point right here. I can get them for free, basically. I just keep attacking, and every single combat is one warfare experience. So it doesn't end up being as valuable as you may think. Early game beside, because you know, early game, it's everything flips on its head because small numbers are valuable because they lead up to the big numbers. We just finished workers, which means we now have 17 improvement points because we got eight improvement points just off the rip. Um, and this is another thing Millennia does. You'll just randomly get boons from these researches, like eight improvement points. Not just the ability to make more improvement points or unlocking another improvement or building, but rather just getting an improvement points. In the same way of like defenses, you get a free archer. The question is, where do we want to go next? I like the idea of having yet another scout. The ability to move through deep forest is good. Having a lookout would be great and gives you an early ability to be able to get more exploration um, exploration XP. So in other words, once we finish this building, we'd then be getting one exploration XP per turn. Now, another thing, once again, I keep saying this because I, I need to emphasize the point because people always want to just compare all Forex games to Civ. There's another difference. Notice that farming is now only four turns worth of research, whereas defenses is still five. And the reason for that is because other nations have researched farming. So farming is more known in the world and it makes this tech cheaper. So now I'm thinking about getting farming because the quicker I can complete this third tech, the sooner we can get into the age of bronze. 
and there are some advantages for being the first into the Age of Bronze. So we're going to go farming to shave that turn off. Reminder, pasture. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder, game. Let me get that beautiful pasture right here. Yes. By working the pasture, we're getting exploration XP, leather, and meat. Now I got to show you this beautiful stuff. Here is all of our tiles on our region. By working this pasture, we're getting that the exploration XP, the meat, and the leather. This meat and leather comes up over here in our goods. For these goods, we're consuming that meat for three food, and we're consuming the leather for three wealth. All your goods are what ends up adding to your yields here. Now, we also have another dude who is working this grassland and just giving us two food. So it's the combination of us working tiles. They're actually doing something called foraging. And our goods generation. But all of these goods, we're going to be able to build production chains on it. So we might, for instance, send the meat to a to a, uh, a kitchen, right? And instead of getting three food, we'll get six food. What happens to scouting and defense when you hit bronze? Nothing. And you're about to see that here in a few minutes. It'll, you can still go back and get those earlier texts. Great question by Crazy Old J. All right, where are we? We're back down to one point. You can highlight over the domains to see what you're making per turn. Notice now that our exploration XP, we're getting plus one per turn because we're working that pasture. What just happened up there? We lost a unit. How in the world did we lose that unit? Oh, it was so close. No, it looks like we lived. Oh, there was another, there was another barbarian. See, another barbarian came out of the fog and absolutely, which by the way, that was two more experience. Well, that changes it up. That means there's two barbarians up there. So I'm going to wait for that archer. And then we'll combine and we'll go up there. And uh, I'm also going to grab this guy. We need to go take care of that camp. Right now, we don't have any roads or anything. How quickly do units heal? When you're outside of your region, they do not heal unless you basically fortify them. Um, they call it guard, and then they'll slowly heal. They heal a lot faster inside your own inside your own area. All right, we're up to twenty on the government. All right, here's something else I need to show you. Seattle. This is the region of Seattle. It has right now our only need is food. As we go out through the game, we're gonna have needs of food, housing sanitation, education, etc., etc. It just keeps growing. We are meeting 175% of that need. So 100% of that need means everybody's being fed and eating normally. 175% means we're able to grow. Doff says, I just checked the Steam page for supported modes. A modern game supporting LAN. It's been, what, 10 years since games stopped supporting LAN in favor of forcing everything online? That's good stuff. I didn't know that, Doff. 
Mr. Jibo with a pandiculate. Thank you very much. Who knows, Joe? So it adds an interesting level of strategy, honestly. There is so, that's what I'm saying is there are so many choices. The, the amount of strategic choices that you make is enormous. It's enormous. All right. Um, all right, we have our paths. We're going to meet these up and we're going to form an army. Meanwhile, this scout's going to keep going over. We can get past here. This is good. Two turns until we finish farming. This scout down here is meeting up with this one, so I want to send this one further out. Oh, there's another tribal camp. We've had good luck with the tribal camps this game. That's a great early start. I'm a little worried about a barbarian coming out of the clouds here. So since we have the turns to spare, I'm going to move down. And that way they can meet up sooner. I may travel further out too as we're moving up. Even though I do have to wait for this dude. Rakeen in with a drink. Cheers to you and happy Friday. Appreciate the uh, streamer care from Jibo and Rakeen. All right, here we are. Pop. Artifact. A village built around a large stone monolith. Its etchings and carvings tell complex stories in an unknown language. It's very significant to the village people. Knowledge or culture. Now this is a much more difficult decision than it was before when it says like knowledge or a domain because cultural powers are very powerful even though we only have two cultural abilities two cultural powers right now so i think we're going to go more with the knowledge which then completes farming echo has to stay healthy to build sour gas boilers and now we are 10 turns away you see we did get a little bit of Progress into the Age of Bronze. Ten turns away from entering the Age of Bronze. And that will really start to make sense and explain to you why it's good to be at the head of the tech tree in the world. But you don't have to be. Right? You can, you can sort of play the middle of the road pack. It's, it's basically another strategic decision. Kevin in with another gifted sub. Thank you, Kevin. I'm telling Liz. You're going to be in trouble. Should be able to redeem 10 push-ups or jumping jacks. Push-ups wouldn't be a bad idea. The problem is doing them. I'd have to get out of the chair. It really interrupts gameplay, I guess. Is what I mean to say. This is a mountain range, so I can't go down here. Which means I have to come through here. So instead of this scout going through here, I'm going to let this scout do that scouting. And this guy is going to go this way. We're at 22 government experience. Look at our borders just grew big. Alright, so now you can meet up. It'll stall us for the turn. But that's okay. You'll be more protected that way. That scouty boy. It's so tempting. Because it's like, oh, just six and six. I wouldn't do the raised tribal army. Right? Having this ability is nice. It, it Basically, it adds another domain power. But that's, we need the settler. Notice now that we have multiple domains. So it's given us more cultural powers. So because we now have an unlock the exploration domain, we now have the ability to do a Eureka, which is just an instant boost of knowledge. And since we have the warfare, 
The cultural culture, uh, the cultural power now gives us the ability to raise an army, which spawns two war bands. So you can see already that the cultural powers not only are they more versatile, but they're typically more powerful. Because we, in our warfare here, we can raise volunteers for 25 warfare experience and get one war band. In the cultural one, though, we could raise an army and get two war bands. Kansas City shuffle in with the Baker's Dozen on the Prime. I appreciate it, Kansas City Shovel. Welcome back. What's the next major item you're thinking about building? We're going to have to take a look at that. Uh, I think we're going to go with the Eureka. Watch the boost it gives us. Bloop. Um... Yeah, we're still working on the council, and it's going to be a little while. This is one thing I wish I could get a little stronger on, is flushing out that early production. Because when your um, nations start, when your regions start, you really don't have much production. We are on four improvement points. Notice we've unlocked more improvements. You can get to the improvements either by clicking here or by clicking on the individual tiles and it'll show you what that tile is eligible for. We could start putting in um, clay pits. They give us production and improvement points. But right now we only have the five or four production. So we're still got a little ways to go. All right, here we go. They are going north to cause some hate and discontent. This scout is going across here. Now, scouts versus barbarians does not end up very well. Uh, the scout has less attack and defense, but more they also have less morale. In other words, they can get sort of routed easier, I guess is a good way to say it. Still going... Maybe I should wait. I'm going to move on to the hill and wait to join up. See how we just got routed? In other words, they attacked us. I'll show you what happened. So we're attacking back and forth. Look at my morale. See how my morale is sinking so quickly? And once the morale is broken, they route, which moves them a tile. That's why they move back here. The good thing, though, is the barbarians don't have the movement that we do. So we're going to be able to get in and around them. The only way I can do it here is by moving up a little. There's the barbarian encampment. We're going to have to take care of that one, too. So maybe we double back. Yeah, it might be quicker to take care of this one first. And this scout's going to pick up this work here. Ah, oh, there's another one. The barbarians can be such a nuisance. Here's our settler. We are one turn late because I was not paying attention. We will spawn that settler immediately in Seattle. And the settler will head off over here. I think this is the best spot. Not a lot of great production over here. But I'm thinking about a city position here. Will give us access to the fish, the rice, and eventually the olives as well. Yeah, and we'll be able to levy the, the forest for the production. We just got routed again by another barbarian. Now, we could do cheeky things. For instance, if I ran into the forest, we would get a defensive bonus and probably be able to fend off. In fact, I could probably do it up on this hill. The issue is always the morale. So I will sit here and guard.
higher ground indeed. And then this scout is going to try to move around that barbarian encampment. Oh my goodness, they're everywhere! We definitely, we haven't met another, um, an opponent AI. And right now I can tell you our, we're going to seem weak to them, which is not great. Because your military strength is going to dictate how they treat you. All right, where are we going to, we're going to go down south with this one, right? We already moved here. We'll link up there. How big is the map? I'll let you know when I ever um, explore one completely. Oh, we're close to dying here. Ouch. We did get a 20% defensive adjustment. If... A scout can beat a barbarian if it's across a river, because this is a 40% defensive um, adjustment. But now, they've put themselves in a um, in a location that I can get, I can skirt around as long as there's no more barbarians, which there are. And this is flat ground, so we are just oh, and they're sitting, they're sitting on a tribal camp. Mine, mine, mine. So it makes me feel like I just need to regroup. This is an ability that the scouts have. I can pay five exploration XP and it basically, the scout returns to our city. We could use survivalist trait, which costs five exploration, and it gave us 50 health. I think that's what we'll do. Instead of regrouping, I'm just going to gain the health. And then try to survive, so that way I could get into that tribal camp. Slight speed, welcome! Uh, it, what is it? Alt doing that? Yeah, alt brings up your, basically, all your tile yields. P shows your pressure, your influence pressure. B, um, shows your, I, your goods icons. Oh my goodness. Alright, let's, uh, looks like we're finally about to meet somebody. Now, this is a minor nation. I could vassalize this minor nation by putting a vassal into it, or by putting an envoy into it. In this case, this is actually not a bad city. Sometimes the minor nations don't have good cities, but this one's not bad, so we may consider vassalizing it. You could also burn it to the ground. All right. I think we're still in the lead. You can now see the percentages because there's other nations going towards the Age of Bronze. It looks like Brazil, Japan, Zulu, and Sweden are all trying to. And uh, we are leading the pack. I have some, a tickle in my throat. Ah, oh, slight speed just failed carnivore. Sorry, bud. That that stinks. Carnivore is a tough one. Uh, our settler gets to move over here. I think... I'm trying to decide what the better location is. I'd like the production in our first ring. So I think it's right here. Now we'll have to wait till next turn to be able to settle it. But that'll be fine. No, nope, you are doing nothing. And we can finally settle that region. We've got Dallas!
And we had one combat, so that was that scout, which is fine. Oh, we've got back up to 10 government experience. I'm not going to want another settler, so I'm definitely going to grab the food from tribal farming. And work into our uh, our tribal cards. You can see your government buffs. Well, you can't. Um, but the government buffs are down here. This is what the government itself is giving us. Or the yields it's providing. Uh, we also have enough for a hunting camp. Do I want... I don't want the wealth right now. I don't care about the wealth. What I want is the food. Which makes me want to put, like, a farm down. And that'll be at 12. The hunting camp gives us a little bit of food, too. Um, we only have one tile to do it. Let me show you what it gives. It should show here. Yeah, it'll give us one moot, one meat for three food. Or you can go with a farm for three food, but it gives you a wheat. And you can get a bonus food if you're sitting by a river. I don't know if that's the same for fresh water. There's no river here, so it doesn't look like it. So I think there's nothing wrong with us getting the hunting camp. Now we're getting another meat. And, oh, great. This is, that was actually a better move than I realized. Because it's an improvement next to our town, we're also getting plus one wealth for it. That was a good move. Inadvertent good mood, but a good mood, a good move anyways. All right, so we're almost back with our buddies. Let's go here. Now, you see, we have the full army stack, which will allow us to be able to ransack these barbarian outposts. And we do need to do that. I'm going to keep going over. Oh, yeah. Canterbury is good. Soon as we get an envoy, they're coming over. They've got access to more olives, some game. I cannot beat both of them. but th And this guy will kill me, but I, I still have to be careful. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to move that. Oh, we found a monument or a landmark. This is important, too. We need to discover three of these to get to a certain age. But with this scout, I'm going to have to keep drawing in our survivalist to keep healing up. Now we're back up to 50 health. I probably could have taken one more hit before popping that, but it's fine. I don't love the, that we're eating into our exploration XP, but right now the only domain power we have is scouting, so it's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And I'm pretty sure this is going to say United States at the end of the line, and it does, which means we were the first nation to enter the Age of Bronze. This is where I can show you even more of what Millennia does so well. Um, it has the description of the things we've unlocked. Let me zoom in for you. Whoop. New national spirits, I'll show you. Vassals integrate twice as fast during the Age of Bronze. I'll show you that too. Barbarian warlords may appear. These are like barbarians, but bigger and buffer. Innovation and chaos vents, we got to talk about that. Trade and um, diplomacy. I mean, it's all sorts of stuff. Okay, it's it's so much stuff. Says the same sort of thing. We're now going to enter the age. So much to do right now during this turn. First, the national spirits. Every two ages, you unlock a national spirit. Notice that these national spirits are connected to domains. The exploration domain, the warfare domain, the engineering domain, or the diplomacy domain. So, 
In this case, I really like Olympians for a couple of reasons. A, it gives us access to the diplomacy domain sooner. Chaos events? Yes. You're going to love it. Because we're the first one, we get first pick, right? The first person to select a national superior spirit gets a bonus. If we select Olympians and then the next person who enters and gets their national spirit and they select Olympians, they will not get a bonus, but all of the remaining bonuses will go up. So this is where it can be an advantage if you don't care necessarily about what your national spirit is to wait until these um, bonuses get up. To the, the, the bonuses get greater. In this case, I really like Olympians for a couple of reasons. We can view them, by the way, by just selecting into them and, or, and then going back out. But you can check them all and see what kind of things you can unlock in them. Now, there is a benefit of getting, for instance, Raiders, because it adds a card under your Warfare XP. Same thing with Warriors. And allows you to dump some of that Warfare XP into things. For instance, Spawn Raiders, the Warfare Domain Power, spawns two friendly Raider Bands. Raider Bands are strong. Look at that. 14 attack and 14 defense out of an early game unit. That's pretty good. So Raiders is pretty strong one as well. I like the early diplomacy. And the ability to um, host an Olympic game is pretty good. So in this case, we're going to select Olympians, which then unlocks the diplomacy. Um, unlocks the uh, diplomacy domain power. And there's our magical little envoy right here. So at 30 diplomacy experience, we're going to be able to send um, an envoy over to Canterbury and make it our vassal. In the same way that Dallas is sort of a vassal. Well, it is a vassal. It's providing us very little income due to that. And we don't have control of what it builds. But it's going to be ready to integrate with us in 15 turns. Now, if we increased its prosperity by, for instance, sending it... Um, merchants it would raise this income let me go back and do it it would raise this income here Taryn marine says i tend to like naturalists and wild hunters for the food i've only tried so many of them i wanted to use um the olympics in this one because i am familiar with it and i want to be able to show chat um but i want to, i want to play one with all the national spirits because this is Remember how earlier in the stream I told you there's just so many strategic decisions? That's a massive strategic decision that completely can take your game and go one huge different ways. Just like the idea of the ages. Now, this is what we were talking about. Remember I told you in the Age of Stone, which by the way, um, off that old question that Old Man Jay asked, we could now say, hey, let's go back and get scouting or defenses. Chances are we're going to go back and get defenses. It's really cheap right now, and we could use the archer. But now in the Age of Bronze, when we research three technologies, we then will be able to get into the Age of Iron. But if we discover three landmarks, we and we are the first one into the Age, we would unlock the Age of Heroes. If we... <clears throat> um, if we have too many bad things happen, like units from other nations slain, if we kill six other major na uh, major nations units, that would enter into an age of blood. So early wars would make you go this direction. Early discoveries would make you go this direction. Standard age would make you go this direction. Cobham and Rose, welcome back. Now keep in mind though, this is the interesting caveat. 
the first nation to get into one of these ages, all the other nations follow them with it, follow them into it. So in other words, if um, Brazil goes into an age of blood, the age of heroes goes goodbye, the age of iron goes goodbye, and the entire world goes into the age of blood. Does that make sense? Did I do a good enough job of explaining that? The trendsetter, the person leading the pack into the ages is what determines what the world is going to be in. Um, yeah, we're going to we're going to jump back real quick and get this free archer and the ability to unlock archers. And then we'll have some decisions here. Quite a few decisions, because once again, it, it just. The amount of uh, what do we call it? the butterfly effect in this game is real. All right, what else we got going on? We have four improvement points. Not good for anything. We do have a little bit of experience. I think we're going to save it, though. I don't necessarily care about raising the tribal army. I very rarely use my government power to raise tribal armies. I think I'd rather get the knowledge or the improvement points. So we're going to save that. And... I think that's it there. We finally have our army together. And we're going to go down there and cause some ruckus down here. I'm going to try to scoop away. Because I want to discover this. And here's the ability. Discover the landmark. Once we do, we get the boon of discovering the landmark, which gives us five experience, plus one discovered landmarks, and ten combat experience. Which is pretty good. The ten combat experience is us gaining a level, our unit. The Aurora Borealis. Now, when we go back into our research, you can see that we've discovered one landmark. If we can discover three and get into the Age of Heroes, that would be phenomenal. Uh... Spoiler alert, getting into the Age of Heroes can be pretty difficult. The only way I've been able to get into it is by an enemy AI getting into it for me. All right, another scouty boy. Let's go scout up here. I'm not worried about the healing yet. <laughs> Gregon says, Royal Borealis, this time of year? This time of day? In this part of the country? <laughs> Fair. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we're going down here. Oh, yes. Here's another thing I want to show you. This is revolutionizing the 4X genre just in itself. There's an undo button. That's right. Undo. <laughs> now, you can use that to cheese a little bit. And you can't undo all actions. So you are under your own sort of guise of how you want to use it. I personally only try to use it for misclicks. Like, if I move to a place and discover a bad guy, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go there because the bad guy's there. I didn't have that knowledge before, so I won't use undo. For me, I'm only going to use it for misclicks because how many times... In a 4X game, do you end up moving your, your person somewhere and you're like, I didn't want to move him there. But we're going to go mess up this Barbarian. Look at that big range damage. Now remember, combat only lasts for so long, depending on the type of units you have here. And it lasted just long enough for us to kill that Barbarian. And now we have another one. It's all right. We're going to be able to sweep all those up. Oh, come on. All right. We're going to have to hold. There's no way I can get reinforcements down here in time. I could retreat them. I don't want to do that. I want to kill them. I don't know where the camp is that they spawn from, but it's probably close. And I want that tribal camp. So we are going to sit here and guard. 
which does not give you defensive bonus, by the way. Guarding does not do that. It's only the terrain that does it. But it will help us heal every turn. Let's go up. Discover these tiles just to make sure there's nothing there. And there was little secrets hiding behind the clouds. Oh! Did you see that? We met another nation. We've met Spain. And they grabbed our goody hut. Which means they came from the north. So I think it means I'm just going to abandon searching up here. Because if they came that way, they've probably gotten all the goody huts. So I'm going to head south. And we're going to do it this way. Because I want to find more landmarks. But I gotta, I, I'll gotta. i bet you this is the bottom of the, the area. Another reason why it's difficult to get the Age of Heroes is because you saw my scout was able to discover that landmark. Well... Anybody's scout can discover a landmark, and once it's discovered, it's discovered. So not only do you have to find three landmarks, you have to be the first one to find them. All right. This is fine. Just keep running all up into us. That's fine. Uh, we could spawn another scout with our exploration XP, but I'm not. I'm going to save our exploration XP to be able to do emergency heals. Nothing yet on tribal. We have unlocked enough to do another hunting camp. Um, you cannot even do improvements until they are integrated. This is another thing we should be saving our government points for. Because in 10 turns, we're going to be able to integrate, but it costs government XP. So that's definitely a possibility as well. All right, let's go destroy this dude. You can also fast forward through these. We can skip right to the end of the combat. And that'll be that for that turn. There's our met meeting another nation. Now, diplomacy is finick. It's finicky. No, fickle is the word I'm looking. Our power is substantially lower from Spain. Remember I told you that there was no difference as the player on what, so, um, what nation you were playing? It matters, though, for the AI because in this case, the Spain is militant. That's their sort of personality which means they're going to be eager to stoke the flames of war. So we need to get our power up. Which makes me think I should be getting the raised tribal army, but I'm not going to. I am going to get our extra improvement point per turn. So now we're getting two improvement points per turn. Can I get another hunting camp? No, because we have no scrubland. Now, I could take this X... Oh, I don't have the ability. You'll eventually get the ability to... Where is that? Yep, here in scouting. I think it's in scouting. You gain a domain power of being able to... Here it is, right here. Claim territory under officials... It's an exploration domain power that you literally just click and this area becomes yours. Is the map based off the world or fictional? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Because it is procedurally generated. It is random. We could spawn another scout. That would get our abilities, our military power up there. All right, let's thin out the herd. Keep doing that. 
We're still able to kill them each turn, which is really good. All right, our scouty boy. This one's going south now because we found Spain to the north. And there's another barbarian! We might have to use some exploration XP. All right, we have some bad guys here. I cannot kill them by themselves. You notice this is a barbarian warlord. They have a total attack of 22 and a total defense, so we're going to keep that archer in here. Which makes me think our next thing up, we still have four more turns to get this. Might be Palisade Walls. Who am I kidding? I'm going for the work camp. I love production because it's so delicious. Chris, 1999, says, Yay, a new start. I love this game, honestly. I love the unique ages one can be pushed into. So far, I've seen the Age of Blood, Age of Heroes, and Age of Discovery. So many totally awesome and interesting ways one could make the world evolve. Well said, Chris. I've been singing its praises all stream. Welcome to the chat, by the way. All right. Now, I'm not going to attack across the river for this barbarian boy, but I am going to try to peek over, so maybe they'll leave this scout alone. How do I want to deal this? I think... Going to get it and keep running might be the way. I could spawn another Scout Cavalry or get 20 exploration points. Remember, it costs 20 to get a Scout Cavalry. I think we're going to grab the Scout because it'll add it directly to this army. Now we're a little stronger. And there's another Barbarian encampment. Now we're a little stronger. Chris says, thanks, and I see your more diplomatic focus play as an Olympian. It's a solid way of just spending spare diplomatic XP. Absolutely. I like it for a couple of reasons. Um, I love the Olympic Games culture power, and also the ability to get that earlier envoy is big. Because I think we're going to use it to grab Canterbury because that's a strong city location. I also, I think, want to get another city around this area here nation. Alright, let's check and see how this went. Alright, we killed that barbarian. And we're gonna heal next turn because we are sitting here guarded. So we should be okay. I don't have to use the heal there. The scout's ability to heal. Finally completed defenses, which is we knew because it gained us that archer. Adds additional defenders at the capital in town, which is good, too. Uh, winning this next age can be tricky. Or getting there first. I like belief because it gives us the college... Because it gives us the temple, which gives us culture and knowledge. Discipline is also very strong because it unlocks the spear unit and allows you to expand to a four army stack. Once you unlock discipline, barbarians aren't really an issue anymore. I think we're holding our own. And I would like discipline to be a little bit cheaper. So let's grab belief first. I don't know if that's the right call. Um, there's also community, which gives you um, the saw the saw pit for engineering experience, which is another domain power. The crane, which gives you more improvement points. Um, the mills, which gives us more wheat and rice. It, well, it's the first time it can convert wheat or rice into two flour. Remember that production change I was telling you about? It can take two of those wheat goods or rice goods and turn them into two flour, which basically times sixes that food. And then the kiln, which does the same thing for clay into bricks. Which is very strong as well. I like community as well. 
So we're going to be, I think our first three are going to be belief, discipline, community. Because we are having some weird product, not weird, but painful production problems here. Have we unlocked mining? Nope. It actually might be mining. Because we could get a pioneer, discover some gold on here, and actually amplify our production. Instead of worrying about the knowledge and the culture. Yeah, let's do that. We're getting mining first. Taryn Marine said, yeah, I totally missed the good chain system during my demo run. It's a, it's, and that's nothing to be blamed either. You can't take any blame for that because it is such a radical new idea in the Forex, in the Forex genre. Definitely a, a strong, a strong addition to the genre, but I think it'd be beneficial to unlock the mining here so we can get production churning. Because right now, we're just producing way too slowly. We still have four turns from our second building. All right. Well, let me also give you the point, too. So we haven't talked about innovation or chaos yet. Did I not do it right? Oh, there it is. Innovation and chaos. I don't remember what we did to get innovation points, but we're earning 10 per turn. You can also do that for chaos points. Right now, we're not earning any. When you fill up the meter, this meter here, you get a positive effect or a negative effect. Once you do that, right now we're getting 10 innovation points per turn. It reduces that per turn rate by 30%. So then we'd only get seven or six innovation points per turn. Michael says, stupid question, but my prime appears to be gone, but the extend prime button is only for a real paid one. Where is the Bezos Bucks button hiding? I'm not sure. I am not sure. It might not be. Has it not? You may have spent it somewhere else and not have it available yet. You gain the innovation points because you were the first to enter a new age. Or oh, once you complete the government tree, Marine, um, Marine agrees. It, it might be that age thing, which is just another great reason. Oh, I do remember it. The, it's a message up at the top when you enter the age. Okay. Um, another great reason to be the first to the new age. Let's go next. Um, we're staying here. I want that goody hut before Spain finds it. All right, and turn. Here comes that barbarian warlord, which they're going to cause me pain and discomfort. Oh, that was the first one? There's another one? So this is our city militia. You don't see them as units on the map. You can expand your city militia. Once we unlock palisades, we'll have walls here. We can also have towers. I want to make sure we did kill this guy. And it does look like we do. Yep. Which age are we? Uh, we're in the second age. I am not worried about this Barbarian as much now. But we're still just going to keep running. Because we want the exploration. It's more important to us. And there's another tribal. This guy's going to come over. I'm going to try to draw up some of these Barbarians to come over here. And I suppose I can attack into for the first time. This is what the Palisades would look like if we had some around ours. And throughout the time, um, you will be able to get stone ones, stone walls, stone towers, that sort of stuff. I 
I want that unit. Okay, we finished, and that unit is living, but not doing great. Now, the Palisades do gain their health back. So, what I might do is take this guy out and attack again, just to get rid of those Palisade walls. I'll show you that next turn. Because only the scouts have that ability to heal in the middle of the map by sp spending points. Spawns a warband. How far are we away from integration here? Four turns. Archers should be able to fire over the wall. They do. They can. Um, they make the... The army makes the decision on whether or not it's more important to destroy the walls or to destroy the unit inside of it. They will alternate between doing that. Michael, um, dear Drongo, dear Drongo has a pretty good answer for the prime issue. Oh, uh, we will stay in here. That Barbarian Warlord is going to try to attack in. That's fine. We can spawn some volunteers, and I am happy to do that. That's another unit. Makes us a little bit stronger. And we could spawn another scout, but I don't see a big reason to spawn another scout. There's too many barbarians up here. We're going to get trapped. Spain's already scouting all that. So I'm not 100% sure. We'll see. Uh, you are staying guarded. Next turn. Oh yeah, that that dude got wiped out. Uh, next. Right down here. A hundred wealth or ten production. We're definitely taking the production. A hundred percent. Wealth does not have that much of an ability yet. We will unlock the ability to be able to rush production and buy things with our wealth. But for right now, we do not. And it brought it down to we only have one turn left to get the council. Which, remember... That is a lot of knowledge. Right now, we're only getting 2.06 knowledge. We're about to get a 33% increase in the amount of knowledge just from that one building. So, it is worth it. We're up to 13 here. If I had a forest tile, we could get the forest. There's no other pastures. Maybe a clay pit. Maybe that's the way we go. Because a clay pit would give us production and improvement points. And we can you can change these improvements around. Just because you have them there right now doesn't mean that's how they stay. I think the clay pit's the right move. We still have 10 turns till we get mining. And we'll definitely do that improvement next to Albany. There's our clay pit. And that way, Albany gets the, uh, the wealth bonus. So now we're getting two wealth from Albany. And we just improved our production by quite a bit. All right, where are we here? Guarding it up. You are going to attack in, but we're going to let this guy stay out of that fight. Not ready. And then this guy, these two will go in. Because I want to keep, I want to get take down those walls as fast as we can. I might need to heal. I think these guys are going to hurt us. They may even kill us. We lived. We lived. We need to heal. Now I'll drain them back up and sit there for a couple of turns. Cultural power. Remember the last time we had a cultural power? 
We could create a town for Dallas, but I don't think it's worth it yet. We could use our Eureka, which is now worth 10 knowledge. Or we can raise an army. And raising army cultural power now gives us a warband and archer. Looking at our power level compared to Spain, I want to raise an army. We will raise them right... I don't know what happens, because I can't have four stacks yet. So does it push one out? Yep, just pushes them out. Which this is fine, because... I'm going to take two archers and a warband, and we're going to go cause some hate and discontent down here. Michael found their um, Twitch Prime. There's a small clickable text, improve subscription for a secondary window, and then use Prime. Nice job, and I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you for uh, blessing me with your prime out of all the channels out there. Mr. Jibo in with a pandiculate and a drink. Cheers to you. Um, we're going to take this opportunity to take a quick break. And when I mean quick break, I know how fickle Friday audiences are. All right. It's only going to be just a couple minutes. I'm going to go... Uh, Shake the dew from my lily. Grab a quick smack, snack. Yeah. And we'll be right back for some more amazing millennia content. Yay! Thank you, Melly B. Says, thank you. I was struggling to find it as well. That's good stuff. I'm going to have to remember that one. See, everybody thinks I'm the one that brings the chaos. No, 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 no. <sighs> Chat brings the chaos. I'm just the conductor. Choo choo. We need a mod strictly for Zoom purposes. Well, the, um, 314, March 14th, 314, hmm, oh my goodness, <laughs> oh, it's 3.14, it's pi, I should have done a lot more working work on my username. My goodness. My goodness. That is the most adorable thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Anytime you open the pantry, you go. Ah. So like this. Yeah, I think that looks better. And I'm paused again. Stand by, chat. I have lost the right to use the pot, the space bar. Okay? Here it is. Here it is, chat. Space bar, gone. Well, not really. <laughs> now I just get it. bad for that dude though feels bad man oh man he's straight hadley there's not polluted oxygen in there oh my gosh <laughs> oh 
How? The chair blocked it? Okay, we'll fix that. Hold on, I'll give you exhibit A. I'll give you an exhi exhibit A. Stay. It makes me mad. I don't know how Chloe Cosmos twirls with such, with like twirls with the grace of a ballerina. I don't understand it. How does Chloe do it? Chloe, teach me your twirl skills. Pumpkin pie in with 100 twirl bits. <laughs> and then B-dubs in with another 100 twirl bitties. Thank you for the twirl bitties. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. It'll still be a three pump max. And the man selling the lemonade says, do you have any grapes? And the guy says, no, I don't have any grapes. So he says, okay, I'm leaving. I'll see you again tomorrow. The duck then comes back tomorrow and asks the lemonade stand guy, hey, do you have any grapes? No, I don't have any grapes. I sell lemonade. All I have is lemonade. I don't have any grapes. The duck says, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. This goes on and on and on. And finally, the lemonade stand owner gets very frustrated and says, look, I've already told you I don't have any grapes. All I sell is lemonade. If you come back here and ask if there's any grapes, I'm going to tape your bill shut. So the next day, the duck walks up to the lemonade. With a old huge custom deck, or do you die after three losses or something? Damn you! Well, we got our first one, right? Oh, and it still shows our three. Come here, buddy. This is Chester. Hi. But look, the mouth opens, and it's even got the weird, like, bone, the bone thing with the eye. It's, I don't know what it is, but it looks like maybe it's a baby Chester or something. Isn't it amazing? But we put it right back in Chester's mouth. Oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Chester's a good boy. <laughs> and Max, please stop fondling the ears. Unless I give you the little wink, okay? <laughs> Not in front of everybody. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we need the smoldering salami. We need Aiden the duplicate. He's our, he's our resident. He is our resident um, Wisconsinian, Wis Wisconsinian, Wisconsinite, Samsonite, Wisconsinite, Wisconsin. Nah, the people from Wisconsin. Eh? Today's stream is not being brought to you by Perrier, and the reason why it's not is because, well, they don't even know I exist. But. Enjoy your parry. Yay! <laughs> oh, those labels better be facing out. Okay. Those designers made that label a way that way in a, for purpose. There's a front and then there's a back. You don't want to look at it from the back. You want to look at it from the front. Otherwise, all you, you don't even know if you're, you're picking up a can of peas or is it a can of carrots? Who knows? It could be anything. Chaos! All right, that one does make me laugh a little bit. I'm glad to see Bro Echo made a return. I'm going to remove that clip. I have to remove the clip. It's the feels bad man. It, it, it's just, oh, it's so cringy. 
it does it makes my tummy feel weird. It makes me feel all weird. I had to I had to get out of the game because the clips weren't playing well. I do have Millennia cranked up in the settings. <laughs> Caddy Ch Caddy John says, but that's what makes it great. Oh, great for you, maybe. Not great for me. All right, let me go uh, load that game right back up. Boo -doo -doo. It's this one, right? Yes. Beautiful. I appreciate everybody sticking around. I really think the clips help people stick around because it's something interesting. Not saying you're not interesting, chat. That's not what I'm saying, okay? Uh, oh, I got to show you something else cool. Where's my audio? What was this on, 50? Check this out. You don't have to have the hex grid on, which that's pretty standard. A lot of Forex games have that ability. But this, being able to change the width of them, and even their how dark they are or how opaque they are, look at that. So if you wanted to really rock out with the best of guns out, you can do it. Boop. I need a button. I keep saying that I need to set my break button so it does all that stuff for me. Adjusts all the volumes. I like to keep it right... I think this right here at a 2 and a 0.5. I think it looks clean. Still allows you to see the hexacons, to appreciate them. All right, where are we? What's our power score now? 187. Let's see if it changes next turn because we just added some armies. A couple of combats happening. Yeah, 187. Compared to Spain's 233, we still got some more growth to do. All right, this fella here took a little bit of damage. Still only five of the experience to get the heal. Uh, we don't need to see that. I think we're just going to keep going. I don't want to lose that other that scout, though. Ah, there's nothing here. Maybe there's something on this peninsula. There's a barbarian archer. That's not good. But if they try to attack across, they're going to get mutilated. We're just going to guard up because we need the heals. And then I'll keep going around. Maybe I should spawn another scout because right now we're not getting any exploration done. So we will spawn another one. Brought us up another four points in power score and we will send this. Whoa. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I thought it was a barbarian. It's just Spain. It's just Spain. Here is this fella. We are going to go down here. Oh, we can't go down here because they've got the mountains in the way. What are the chances? We have to go explore this one tile because there be, could be something good in it. I don't know if it would show the tribal village underneath the clouds. See how it shows you that it is a, a, a grassland or a scrubland? This guy's living, though, because he's just sitting here healing. They also... Oh, when your units level up, because of the combat experience we've gotten, look at the bonuses that we're getting in combat now. The cavalry actually becomes stronger the more experienced it gets. Which I like that as well. Veteran level 2, we get 1.2 times the attack and defense. All right, uh, this warband is staying here. 
Dallas. We can integrate. They that bar finished. They are ready to integrate. We could get twenty five for twenty five. We're at fourteen. Now you don't have to integrate any. There is the ability, a hundred percent, the ability to play tall versus wide in this game. We could just sit there and keep making vassals and live off of this in income and never integrate. Because the one bad thing about having more, uh, I guess, directly connected regions or... I don't know how to use those words. And turning it into a capital region is... It, there's an additional culture upkeep. So by integrating this vassal, our culture upkeep is going to grow. Which would then reduce the amount of culture we're creating. Now, Dallas would create more culture than 0 0.06. We'd get more culture. So that minus three of culture upkeep wouldn't necessarily net be a minus three. It could be, you know, a minus... We might be losing... Uh, we'd probably actually probably gain one culture overall. Green Bull 95, first time chatter, says, Great stream. Thank you very much. Welcome, by the way. Appreciate the follow. All right, let's go check this out. We have finally finished the council inside of Seattle. I like going warp camp next because of the increase in production. I want to get the production up. So we'll go right into the work camp. Arguments could be made for the meeting hall because you get the diplomacy, um, the dolmen, which is for influence. Food stockpile would help you grow quicker, but not necessarily because, well, right now it would. Right now, we're only hitting 138% of our need for food. So we might have to do a farm here soon to help keep growing. All right, let's head north again with this scout. We'll try to play the scout game of working around the barbarians because we've been so static with all this look at all this let's check this combat the more combat they're getting they're getting more experience too oh that scout's close All right, we lived. Uh, I definitely am going to need to take the heal, though. Oh, I could only take it from one? Oh, I did the wrong one! I thought it was for the whole army. That stinks. And I did the one that was already healed. So what we can do is go here. Oh, there's another one right there. I think I can actually cross the river and still kill this archer. Oh, I, not with them in the way, though. Let's see what this combat ended up being. Oh, we lost... We lost a war band. Chad, it's becoming unraveled. Please don't lose another war band. Oh my goodness. They are getting torn up. If I move them up. And then I can go kill this. It's not a great move, but it's the move we're going to take. It gets the scout out of the range of the other ones. Slice. All right, now, yeah. So the scout's going to be out of this range. We don't have to worry about it. This guy is going to be within range now. We might go up into the forest because we're not going to be healing this turn. What a heavy combat round that was. This guy's staying. You're guarding. 
and they just keep coming. Now, the seasoned barbarian, <laughs> which we would not do well against it, but then that's not going to matter too much more because we are bringing this fella down to aid. We're still doing okay with health. I don't have to pop it. Oh, we're actually out of exploration. That was the reason that we couldn't heal the other one. We were out of exploration points. Okay. I think that scout's heading back the same way we are. Two scouts following each other is uh, the opposite of progress. But we are going to be able to go down here, grab yet another tribal village. Ten innovation? Or ten culture? We need a total of 26 culture. It's a little bit more than 26. It's 27.3 before we end up getting a culture power. So I think the innovation might be better because we're already at plus 10. So when we go to plus 20, now when we take the 30% hit next turn, we're still going to be beyond plus, um, plus 10. So we'll get more boons from innovation. He's got a little salt and pepper on him, says Pyroy. Makes him stronger, too. Which, oh, we met Russia. Nice to meet you. This number here is the overall combat power of the unit. Remember, it used to be 14. Now it's a 20. The reason why is because there is an age 2 buff for the Scout Cavalry. It increases them up to a 14 defense. I don't know where we met Russia, but somewhere we did. Let's check them out. Oh, they're at 218 too. Eventually, someone's not going to like us when we put down more vassals. I need to remind ourselves that we want that envoy and not spend it on the Olympic Games. That envoy is critical to our plans. We could also be saving up for another settler. We need 36. And we get three government per turn. That might be the better move instead of integrating Dallas. We are up to 13, which means we can put down a farm, which we're going to. Right now, we're growing in three turns. Still not there. But the farm, especially around Albany, to give us more cash. Now, you could put a farm... Okay, so on this um, this cotton, we could just put a farm. And it'll just give us one wheat. But we wouldn't be getting the bonus of having the two cotton. So I think the best move here is to put a farm... And make sure that we're putting around Albany. Now we're meeting 150% uh, of our food. So it may not look like we gained any turns. But as you can see, the progress towards the next population, it's down to the hundredths of a percent. So you never know. We'll still end up growing faster in the long term. All right. Oh, nothing out here. All right, we did gain a little bit of health back. I can't believe we lost that unit. In fact, I think we can take that unit. Because of the archer. Archers do bonus damage against line, line infantry. A barbarian is a line type unit. Uh, da -da -da -da. Down here, another tribal village. Give me something good. Another 10 innovation? Oh. Innovations can be very, very good. I don't know if it makes sense for us to advance 
to try to get knowledge, to try to get a heads up on research, but I'm taking the innovation. Plus 30. I've never been at plus 30. That is monstrous. I don't know why we haven't gotten the boon yet, though. How are we doing over here? Yeah, there it says being the first nation gives you um, gives you the ten innovation. All right, it's a growing likelihood of receiving a positive innovation event at the start of your turn, but it is not automatic. I hope we didn't make a mistake by taking too much innovation. I don't know if that's a thing. Okay. Let's now start going north through this direction here. And if we highlight over the unit, in this case, the scrub or the uh, barbarian camp, you can see that its walls are back up to 52%, which is not great. So I need to keep healing. You probably should have taken knowledge since your innovation is reduced by 70% when the boon triggers. Okay, so I have always misunderstood that. It doesn't reduce it by 30%. It reduces it to 30%. Yeah, that's a great point, excellent sheep. First time chatter, by the way, welcome. Um, yeah, that's an excellent point. I should have definitely taken the knowledge. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to be fine. Oh, I know what I can do here. I'm going to take the full-powered scout, join this, and then next turn we'll be able to attack. Speaking of which, we absolutely obliterated this unit. Look at that bonus damage versus line types. And let's go in. I don't know how it figures out what it wants to do. But notice that each archer did something different. Oh, that... No! Kill the barbarian! I gotta heal again! This is why defense is so good. Being able to have two line armies and two archers, two range units, is so good. There's our innervation event, and it did. It went down to plus nine. Oh, that hurts. Now, the people of the United States have created a new position within the Hippodrome of Torchbearer. The title can be held by any member of any nation participating in that game. We have the Olympians, which gives us access to the Hippodrome. Now the Hippodrome will give us plus two diplomacy experience, or we can just take a flat 300. This impact is for the rest of the game. This is just 300 gold. So I think in this case, we're going to take the bonus to the Hippodrome. Taco with 100 bits. I saw him late. Can you please restart stream? Turning it right around right now. Turning it right around. Thanks for stopping by, Taco. Thanks for the 100 bits. Man, that I that was a big blunder with the innovation points. I appreciate that uh that tip, sheep. Taco says, "How are you? We're doing well. We're having a great time playing a little early access millennia." Oh my goodness. All right, so this scout is now going to join this army. This scout's going to stay in here and heal up. Whoa! And I hit the wrong button again. I wanted to guard, but it just launched him all the way back to Albany. Ugh. And it cost us exploration points. That was an oopsie. Of 
epic fashion. Where is that battle going? I need to run back there. I guess we'll heal up while we're here. And then we'll head back there. All right. These guys cannot take another hit. So let's heal up some more. This scouty boy, actually... We can do the same thing. We can swap the scout in there to be able to make the attack like this. The reason why you want to take down these camps is because they also give you bonuses. Kind of like the tribal camps do. And as soon as we take out the barbarian that's sitting inside of it, it's an easy job. So now it's just the, the palisades that are sitting there. So next time we attack into it, we're doing great. I am really worried about this veteran warband, though. The undo button was does not work for that for that ability. I would have definitely smashed it. All right, so we finished pioneering, or we finished mining, which gave us access a free pioneer. The pioneer is going to be able to move onto this hill style. And next turn, we're going to be able to see if there's any gold there. Which will make the tile even better when we do improve it. Maybe I should get another farm. We don't have a housing need yet, so I'm not worried about it. Warfare. Let's grab some more volunteers. Keep growing that military. We're two turns away from getting another settler. Lucky Wolf, welcome back. And now this scout can go do some scouty boy things. Here's what we're going to do. This warband is going to change spots with this scout. This not even veteran scout. What is it? Veteran level 3. 1.3 bonus. And now we should be able to attack into this again. Oh, boom. Now we get 13 rounds of just being able to slam into the... 13 turns of slamming into the Palisades. So next turn, we should be able to get two camps. I'm really worried about that warband. I'm going to send... This guy with this unit as well. Reinforce that line. What do we need? What do we need for an envoy? Um, to send it to Canterbury. Uh, it'll become our vassal then. Because Canterbury is a minor nation. All right, we did get the pioneer. We got access to the mine. We got access to the quarry. And we got access to the stone cutter. What did we say? I want discipline. I want the spearmen. No question. Well, small question, but you know. All right. Now this turn, there's nobody in there anymore, right? Yep. They're dead. Barbarian defenders too. Dead. So now it's just us crushing the walls. Bink. Winning. And now we get one of these. We can spawn a free cavalry unit. Now think about this. It's the Bronze Age. And we can get a free cavalry unit. But it will cost us some chaos. Or we can get plus, 10 plus 15 production in Seattle. The cavalry event is big. I mean, a free cavalry unit. This early. But I only had, so with chaos events, you know how with the innovation events, it gave us the ability to take a, a bonus or take some gold. The chaos event, you either take this horrible result or you pay, or you can pay in gold. But normally it's like a three, four hundred dollar cost and we don't have that money. Yorichi Sama says vote. No, I know which way it'd go with a vote. I, I will see what chat says, but you know chat's going to say chaos. 
New poll. Cal uh, chaos event. Or no, what is this? Uh, camp bonus. Calvary and chaos. Or plus 15 production. Remember, chat. Be good gamers, okay? Don't just vote with chaos in mind. You wanting to see the world born. I am proud of you, chat. So far, there's a lot of people saying production. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. Chat's actually got their game face on. They actually have their game face on. Remember, you can see who <laughs> will vote for Chaos because they'll have a one next to their get name. Yeah, that's if they chat. <laughs> oh. Oh, that is only on a prediction. Good call. Good call, Taco. All right, it looks like it's about two to one in favor of the production. I agree. The cavalry unit is great, but we have no idea what that chaos event would be. And once you start earning chaos, you 100% are going to get a chaos event. Eventually. We'll take the production. The poll is flipped. No, it just puts the winner up on top. All right, uh, these guys are going to be okay as long as that one more band doesn't die. Hopefully, maybe. If I could move, could I force march? No. All right, end turn. There's that combat. I don't even want to go look at that combat. I know I'm about to lose another veteran warband like a nub here's our pioneer what do you mean i don't have the ability to do the excavations yet i thought we had that ability right from the rip so a pioneer can also correct an outpost oh am i thinking of a different unit Lucky Wolf says, no, production was at the bottom when I was voting. Yes. Um, but then when the, when the poll ends, it puts, um, it puts the winner at the top. Am I not thinking of Pioneer? Or does it, do we not have the ability? Is it a different age that I'm thinking about? There's an ability that gives pioneers, I think it's pioneers, to basically search a hill to see if there's gold. Well, you're staying in town forever now. We still need more food here. We don't ha we only have 5 workers though. So even if we put down Yeah, here's the reason. We have a worker. When we put down that farm, it was giving us three food, but we had to move a worker from grazing or from foraging, which was already giving us two food. I mean, we're not even working the hill as is. So I think farm might be the way. Look at this. We now have the ability to get the stone cutter, too. Oh, that's what I want. I need to show you that. Notice now we have access to clay. Because we have a worker working the clay pit. Let me see if it is... Is this one the clay one? No. This one, if we were getting access to limestone or marble, we could turn it into a stone block for five production. Prospectors. Maybe that... Or maybe... It might be Prospector, but I thought it was the Pioneer's ability to prospect.
All right. Um, let's. Our settler is only one turn away. Yeah, I think we need the farm. Now, we will be able to destroy these. And when you destroy them, you do get some improvement points back. But not all. And that way you re you can... Re you re A lot of times in games like Civ, once you have an improvement down, it stays there forever. Not in this game. You're constantly wanting to rework. All right, finally, we're getting some fresh exploration on, though. Maybe we'll go east instead of north, because I... We... They didn't attack. I am stymied. I'm going to move into the forest and then guard to heal up. These guys can now do a fresh attack in. And this should be our second bonus. Ah, oh, one turn! Wait a minute. Can these guys get it? No, because they can't move that fast. <laughs> so there's our 20 diplomacy. We could hit an Olympian, unlock the Olympic Games, which is strong. That's what we're going to do after this envoy. This envoy is headed for Canterbury. There's our settler. Which does take a pop from Seattle, by the way. Which hurts, but... I want to get another vassal right here. And they can even travel with that warband. You are staying put. Let me see some goodies. I have a feeling this is another minor nation. Uh, on screen, it was flipped. Even when the poll was going, huh? All right. They spawned a barbarian canoe. But no matter. I don't even need that unit. So I'm going to take this scout out now. So it could keep doing some more scouty things. They are going to join up. And then just go take care of this. Now we get another camp event. A new chief. Barbarians put up a spirited defense. But it is clear that their chief has poor understanding of battle. After several questionable maneuvers, the chief captain promotes himself by beheading the chief <laughs> chaos ensues as the loyal to the chief and those standing in second command turn on one another we can get 20 warfare experience or plus 20 government experience government experience would give us the ability to get another settler sooner and or some tribal benefits which i'm thinking about the tribal benefits now we've already got one settler the warfare experience would allow us to get another uh, volunteers. The people that want chaos are lying, says Jivo. Emap, hello. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the government experience. Notice, too, the settler cost goes up. And we're going to grab the raised tribal army. No, we're going to grab the plus one or plus one knowledge first. We finally finished the work camp, which has helped with production. What do we want now? We could turn that production now into more improvement points. How's the economy? The ec economy. Doing all right. We could get the encampment. It gives our units that spawn there more experience and steady warfare experience regardless of combat, which might be smart. The food stockpile, though, might be smarter. 
I think I want to go food stockpile into encampment. Yep. What can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're good there. Alright, here's our settler. We're going to be traveling together, which is much slower. The settlers can actually move faster than the warbands. I think... Maybe right... Oh, there's a river here, too. I think right here would be good. Or maybe right here at the mouth of the river. It'll give us access to marble and grapes. Do you have any grapes? Yep, that's where we're going. In fact, let me set the movement there. How many years per turn? It changes depending on uh, where you are. Right now, I think it's 50. Let's go find out what this is. Another minor nation. I don't think... I think we prefer Canterbury. We could send the envoy to Canterbury or to, to Freiburg. Oh, I don't know. Freiburg looks kind of strong too. It also has hills, whereas Canterbury has a lot of water tiles. Maybe we just need two envoys. <laughs> it's just so expensive and delays are... Advancing in Olympians. All right. Uh, scout. Going to do scouty things. Once we unlock shipbuilding, we'll actually be able to get on the water. Which would be helpful. Let's go down here. It might just be snow. Oh! Nope, that warband just died. That warband just died. Ah, oh, Because I'm a giant. Not... I could undo it, but I'm not going to do it. That was my mistake. I should have waited. Or kept that scout in there. It's okay. It's okay. Our power score is just slowly evaporating. And notice Spain has some issues with us, and they're up to a 313. They have a minus 25. Did they declare hostilities? I don't think so. Maybe they do, are doing it next turn. Did a scout die? No, a warband did. That's okay. We've got a, we've got a decent army here. This scout can keep going. Oh, look at this! 20 warfare experience or an archer. I think the archer is the way to go. And then we can go travel up there. It's probably just another uh, peninsula, but it'll be okay. All right, this scout is ready. So I suppose it should also go north and expand because it looks like we're on the bottom of a the bottom of the map. Is this an old game? Says Hendu. Uh, no, I have early access, and uh, it comes out on March twenty sixth. If you want to check out more, I have uh, you can hit exclamation game. It is a an affiliate link, which wouldn't cost you any more, but basically shows Paradox that the reason why you went to their website was because um, I sent you. All right, so we just finished research on Discipline. Here's another great thing about this game. Or a, an aspect I really appreciate. It. You don't spend gold to upgrade your units. You spend Warfare experience. Three Warfare experience, and all of a sudden this army becomes a spearman. 
Jen's first time chatter. I appreciate you checking out the link. Um, that's it. So you you got to maintain your economy here. Notice now we also have access to reinforcements and forced march. Reinforcements would have been great a turn ago because we could have um, basically healed that army just a little bit. It does cost combat XP, but it can be worth it. Uh, we will activate the raised tribal army now, which gives us another um, government ability. All right, this scout is going to do scouting on a more northwest direction. And these archers got to make it home, so the scout's got to ex um, escort them because scouts or archers by themselves get wrecked. Monolith 1983 in with the follow. I appreciate you, Monolith, and welcome. All right, we're moving. Couple of strategies here. We could go with the cheapest one, which I think we're going to, to try to get a head start on techno on Age of Iron. But you'll see it too when somebody starts researching or is heading towards another age, it'll pop up here. I don't think we're competitive for getting unlocking the, the age first this time. We're gonna have to see. Oh my goodness. So barbarians don't just wander. Barbarians can also just make new camps, which is exactly what this barbarian did. But it does look like we took one of them out. Yeah, this warband is way too damaged. I'm going to have to heal before I send them in. But I'll take the combat experience. Lucky Wolf says, so what I'm hearing is Echo's playing a game we can't play yet. <laughs> the eight, the years per turn, um, it will go, it gets less and less. So on turn 100, we might be only losing one year per turn. Yeah, this is this is horrible right here. I got to keep these guys alive better because what's going to happen? Spain. Oh, they're happy with us again. I don't know what changed, but that's fine. Their power score when they're unhappy with us, there's like, ah. oh, I see. They're unhappy with Russia. They're fine with us. That makes sense. But they'll look at us and be like, oh, they only have a power score of 215. Um, we're going to declare hostilities, which is not declaring war. It's just hostilities. So you can actually fight as long as you're not in each other's regions. The neutral territory, basically. Um, I will be able to promote that war band. It doesn't give us experience, but it does make them a lot stronger. But I'll wait until they filter out some of this chaff. All right, down some more. And now we're heading back up. Is this game multiplayer? Yes, it will have multiplayer. I will, I will show you the message that it has right now. Yay! Alex, welcome back. With the Prime, three months with a big yay. Um, it has cloud over the cloud hot seat, and it also is simultaneous. So that's kind of cool. Same nations or different nations? I'm assuming different nations. I'd be, I'm fairly confident it'd be different nations. All right, uh, this scout. We're gonna be, we're gonna be getting a little bit faster because you are now more familiar with how the way the controls work, so I don't have to explain them as much. Notice now we have a slot for fourth army because of our advancement. Uh-oh. Yep, 
Brazil is already 14% of the way into the Age of Iron. It's okay. I'm not a... It's okay, Brazil. Oh, and they're gaining 10% per... Per... Uh, per turn. Just came... Just... Just came on to say yay. I appreciate you, Alex. And I appreciate that lurk. All right. Um, still waiting for that envoy. Remember, the envoy is like a little settler. Because it's going to create us a vassal. All right, you guys need to go home. It's Sweden now? Oh, it is. It's Sweden at 25.84 and Brazil at 25.45. I should have noticed from the flag. All right, let's go see what's up here. All right, this is just a large lake. I'm still thinking this tile. It's got a little bit of everything. And, won't, and we won't have to have a mountain that we can't work. All right, let's go check on these folks here. I think they're healed enough. Oh, wow, look at all the enemy units. I'll let them attack into me. Yeah, they're not going to do much damage to those spearmen at all. <laughs> Three damage. Once you get spearmen, barbarians become very, uh, a lot less scary. We'll be able to take that thing down next turn. As long as their scout doesn't do it for... Oh, that scout better not do it. Because that means they would get the bonus. Their knowledge must be pretty high, yeah. Or they've used their cultural boons and kept Eureka-ing. Right? Whereas we created a town. We've done all sorts of little things. Oh, speaking of us, we're up 17 improvement points and I'm just been lackluster and not... Alright, what do we want? We got 200% food right now. We're still growing back from our settler pop. By the way, population five would be the max for a region level one. Because we have a town in here, it made us a region level two. And the food stockpile made us a region level three. Can we please expand into this forest tile? I'd love to get some wood. I guess we're going to go... Ooh, pasture. Oh, I don't have anything to put a pasture on. I guess we're going to grab another... I could put a mine here. For the production, which I kind of like. And it would give us wealth for Albany. Or I could make sure our food stays up. By putting another um, farm down. Because right now we're not even working that clay. We're doing everything we can to work food. All right. Seventeen minus twelve. We'll have five left. Whereas the quarry would cost fourteen and only give us limestone. We'd rather have the mine because it would give us copper. Lucky Wolf likes the mines. And we'll have to wait. Well, then, and that's what we'll do. Why don't we wait a few turns? We're not we're not up to 21 yet, so we don't have to make the decision. We're already at 200% food, which is the most we can have. So we're not going to grow any quicker by putting down another farm right now. So we'll just wait to make that decision. All right, you are finally back. Da -na 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 -na. I'm going to raise a tribal army. Well, 
Or do I want to save for the 25 to get the plus 10 innovation and the 2 culture? I'll get the tribal army. And then I'll be able to upgrade them both into spearmen. And now we are going to have a formidable army with two archers and two spearmen. Amy! Welcome back. Let's... This one's going... Oh, lots of scouty boys. Traffic jam here. Jibo, I saw you say stay healthy, and I wonder what you meant, but I did not see the uh, the drink or the pendiculate. I might need to put a sound effect on the drink or pendiculate, because I didn't even see it. Thank you very much, Jibo. Once again, keeping the streamer healthy. Stretch the legs. And then... Cheers to you. All right. Diplomacy, still 26. These are the things you got to check all the time just to make sure you're not missing out on an action. We've met Sweden. Yeah. How is Sweden's power level? 311. Where is this getting up there? 261. We've got our cultural boon, our cultural bonus now. You know what we need to do? I need to take that pioneer and go make an outpost because then we could use a cultural ability to turn that outpost into another, another vassal. For right now, though, a spear and an archer seems nice. Ten knowledge is not going to get us anywhere. And I'll show you why. We did just get our ability to build temples. Vats, which can turn two grapes and rice into wine. Which that wine will give you culture. And the press for turning flax and olives into cooking oil. Which is a lot of food and a lot of wealth. And then the weaver, which can turn the two cotton into two cloth for more wealth. So the Age of Iron... Let me see if I can... Give me a tooltip. It may not say it yet. Let me go over here. The total research cost is 44. So us getting 10 knocks out maybe 25% of it, but it still wouldn't get us before Sweden does. So I think the best move is to save the culture. I'm going to grab this pioneer and we're going to go put an outpost down. The question is where? I mean, this looks pretty sexy. Is there any place closer to us? I don't like this. It's got a lot of tundra. It's got a lot of... The fish are nice, but... We could forward settle. Which, that always makes the AI happy. Maybe put the outpost here. I like that. I think forwarding settling is probably the way. Zoldan or Lamu. I appreciate you stopping by. Amy said, I borked my computer, so I did a full OS reinstall today. Now it's time to get it set all up again. Big sigh. Did you have a backup? Or are you, are you doing the fresh install of all the uh, apps and everything? All right, here's the settler. There's Houston. Notice, too, that, for instance, Dallas 
It's going to grow. You can see it's already... No, it hasn't expanded its borders yet. But it will. And it'll give us more income. But having the vassals down, I think, is good. These archers can move up. Prospectors moving. I will leave the spearmen. No, the spearmen's going to go join that army there. So there's also something else called unrest. We haven't talked about unrest because it hasn't been an issue. But if I took these garrison units out, people in Seattle might be a little, uh, a little cranky. You'll, you'll generate more and more unrest the larger your, your regions grow. Backups are for professional. Simply due to downtime equals money loss. I take a backup of mine. Jibo says I'm the Echo Health Inspector. I like it. Boot. Yep. Those are, good. Those are staying for now. And then we will... I don't know where we're going to take that. Because that's our strongest army. Nothing here. Nothing there. We are still not healed here. We could, at the cost of combat experience, send some reinforcements out here, which would heal them. Uh, I'm just going to wait for the, the, the spearmen to get over there. We're fine. Oh, that's right. We do need to take that camp. Thank you. Uh, you can pass. They have palisade walls. Uh, the only bad thing is we will be then in the open. And so our spearmen will be vul more vulnerable. But we should be okay. Especially considering these archers are now veteran archers. Which are making them even stronger as well. Good call, Jarifa. Engineering experience, which is another new dom domain... Gives us the ability to spawn pioneers. We can expand the towns once we have it. Or more warfare experience. I'll grab the engineer experience. Because there is another ability I like of it too. Public improvements. Instantly disgain 10 improved points. And also expanding the town. If we expand this town into, say, a farming town, it gets a better bonus for having next to farms. I don't think that's what we're going to do yet. We might just save it for some public improvements. Lucky Wolf is wondering if I'm ever going to do more Ani colony fixer-uppers. I'm sure. I am sure. Oh, uh, this scout was going north. Cultural power. It wants us to use it. We're banking some culture. You see, we're at 33.44 out of 32. We're still gaining it, even though we are just ready to use it. I'm waiting until we get this outpost down so I can make another vassal. Did we continue move here? Yep. Archers finally come home. Now this scout can take a turn to heal. And now we have a full up army. That's a strong one too. 78 power. Speaking of which, how are we doing with our power rating? 277. Compared to 377. My goodness, Spain! Sweden's at 305. Ugh. All right, now I think we should get back into the woods. That way we have the defense, and it'll allow us to heal up a little bit. 
That barbarian may try to run. Oh, look at, look at Sweden with a settler. Oh. oh, there was another monument. I wonder where they're going to come down here. Oh, chat. There were two monuments right there. That could have been, that could have been our age of heroes. My, look how close it was. Oh, that's unfortunate. We tried to do, we tried, remember, we came up here to do some scouting, but there was too many barbs. Oh, this is an envoy, not a, uh, a settler. So that envoy is going to go to Freeburg. We're not going to make it to Freeburg. How many diplomacy are we getting per turn? One. So we have two turns until our envoy comes. And then we got to go all the way over there. So it looks like we are going to be stuck with Canterbury. Who's dealing with a barbarian camp? Oh, that stinks. All right. All right. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine, chat. I will still put a prospector right up. by. Now, this is going to make them mad because I'm going to put an outpost and a vassal here. Hopefully quicker than what they're able to do. But they're still not going to like it because we're going to have shared borders. Cultural power, not doing it, and turn. Let's head east. Yeah, I knew that Barbian was going to try to attack into us here. They don't do much damage against spearmen. They took about 50% off. Why? Oh, they're, they're seasoned barbarians. It's the salty boys. So what we're going to do, we're going to move down here. And we're going to combine these armies. I think we'll be okay until next turn. So I, I'm just going to guard up here. And then we'll move back into the forest. Don't forget the pepper. Another scout. Ugh, man, that stinks. Lots of... What is this, jungle? Oh, why can't I spawn next to some jungle? You could forage for food and production. Culture point. We found another tribal village. I think we lost one. Chat, I think we lost a war band. Or a spearman, rather. All right, mine improvements cost 20% less during the Age of Iron. The growth rate of the population increases by 12.5% during the Age of Iron. And new governments are unlocked. The new government thing is a... Uh, it's So I could take this cultural power. Where is it? Oh, we're not in the Age of Iron yet. Remember, the world is now in the Age of Iron, but we are still not. Welcome to the jungle. We're going to put that outpost right here. I need to highlight that so I remember. Oh, I can't. I don't want to see the damage down here. Notice our vision is much improved. Oh, I still don't have the ability to get through on uh, jungle. <sighs> I never got scouting. Well, we know we're not going to be the first to Age of Iron anyways. So let's go back and get scouting. Twenty diplomacy. 
or 20 government XP. 20 diplomacy me could be another envoy sooner. But I think the government XP is going to be too, it's going to be too valuable considering we're about to change governments and all that sort of stuff. Plus we could raise tribal armies if we want, but we don't really want to. All right. And the good thing about seeing that tribal village is that means there's still undiscovered areas. Uh, let me spawn the envoy. I can get a little closer. By spawning in Houston. What is this guy? He's got a, a different little helmet. Did we live? Oh, yeah, they were already hurt. Very nice. All right, 94 is this army's strength. It's actually stronger than the other one because they're so much, they have so much combat experience. Let's go destroy these folks. We shouldn't get hurt that bad because of those archers. Oh, yeah. Easy day. And then we'll double back and go take out that barbarian encampment here. You will be able to get through the jungle here in two turns. Here's our envoy. What are you? Oh, that's my pioneer. There should be no barbarians up there. We haven't seen any in a minute. Other than the ones up Canterbury, so we're going to have to be somewhat careful. Still not using that cultural power. In fact, since... It'd be smarter to go back here and heal. We'd heal so much faster. I wonder if I can beat them to Freeburg. I'm going to try. Our slow army here. Moving through all this stuff. It stinks because when you settle new regions, if they're close enough, they'll form roads. But these are a little bit too far away. I could put an outpost in here and that would help. We have a lot of points, engineering points. How are we doing? I, I should have been spending my improvement points. All right, see now we're at 100% housing, which means we need to start being, being able to provide housing, which we can do by the use of a dwelling. And now our housing's at 200%, which means we're going to grow faster. We still have 18, which is not quite the... Tw oh, no, the mines are improved. Cheaper mines now that we're in the Age of Iron. Chris, 1999 with the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome. So I think now we'll go with the, grab the copper for two production. Yeah, I like that. Now I can take my engineering points though and do some public improvements or I could expand the town. Raises the region's level by expanding the town and it allows you to specialize the town, which is in here but I don't know if it's necessary. So I think we're going to grab more public improvements. So now we're back up to 21. Let's get more production. Which will give us another copper too. Limestone or marble to stone blocks. Do we have any? We don't have any limestone or marble in here. No, we have copper. And we're not even working that clay. So notice this too. Because we're not working the clay pit, we lose access to the clay. But I think I'm okay with that. Because especially when I get this next mine. And I can destroy this. 
We're going to get a refund percentage of 25 improvement points. Chris says, I can see where the God King Nation spirit might be good as the whole engineering XP and title improvement game is their song street. That combined maybe with the mounds. National spirit. Oh no, they're both H2, aren't they? So we could refund that and now I can repurpose this. Granted, we only have seven, um, but our production should be greatly improved now. Four turns for an encampment. Yeah, it's, Temple will now only take us seven turns. More scouties. One turn till we finish scouting, and then we can go delve into there. Spear. Spanish Spearman. Still not using that, but we're getting close because we're almost to the point of where the outpost is going to be. I don't know if you're... Meter is full if you take a penalty. I don't think you do because, look, we're at 44.31 culture out of 32. We'll get some of that culture back. God King is about having hills in mind, says Chris. Actually makes mines more useful, but you could actually get a quarry. But I don't know what that would mean. Um, well, the, it gives you a different material. Quarry is sort of default, right? Kind of like a farm is a default. Um, we, you could put a farm on this plantation. And, or you could put a farm on this cotton. And if, you'd get three food. Or if you put a plantation, the plantation's what it actually takes to get the cotton. A mine is just a default way to get limestone. But or a quarry is just a default way to get mine limestone. Whereas the mine is the default way to get copper. Lots of government points. So what we can do here now with the 25, we're going to gain the 10 innovation and the 2 culture. I'm trying to wait for this cultural, this innovation to pop. So we're going to wait. It's being obnoxious like that. And we got our free scout. Which I think we're going to have it join up with this scout. Make this army a little bit stronger together. We might actually get that envoy before Spain does. Chris says, I think innovation might be accumulative. It is. It, we would go up to 19. The issue is, once the innovation event pops, we lose 70%. We lose 70% of it. So it, the math works out. It's better to wait for the innovation event to pop before you get the 10 uh, yep, Sweden this is already there. I didn't notice the flag. So I can undo that move and bring it back. They must have just gotten there that turn. It was close. Divert to Canterbury. Diverting! But watch our diplomacy, too. Uh, that is Sweden. Right now, we got some nice, neutral, happy diplomacy. As soon as we drop down this outpost, they're going to be like, What? But that's okay. Iron Scarred. These guys were going in here to heal up. They'll heal a lot quicker there. And then we're going to go take out both of these. Oh, there's going to be barbarians. I'm going to have to be in careful, careful with this envoy. We can now go in the jungle. Although it may not behoove us to do that. Because it reduces our movement so bad. Why is there an archer all the way up here? Oh, you silly, silly boy. You need to go back home. You can go up here. Where did I pick up an archer? 
what I mean, chat. Got to pay attention in this one. Outpost, outpost. Finished scouting. Also unlocks the lookout building, by the way. Now we'll finish Age of Iron. Here's the innovation. Finally. See how we're de we went from nine down to two? Expert masons can carve stone more efficiently. Honing our mason skills will improve the usefulness of stone mined from quarries. Plus one bonus production from marble and limestone goods. Oh. We have to take this. And I think you know what I'm about to do. I have to. I have to get rid of the copper and change it for limestone. We're getting two production by working copper. I think you get two production for working limestone. Or not even though, because then we could take it and throw it into the stone cutter and get even more. We'll destroy it. There's the quarry, which is going to give us the limestone. That's now worth three production. I'll keep this um, copper here for now. But I really want more public improvement points now. But we don't have a method of gaining. Oh, no, we are gaining one ex uh, engineering experience per turn from Seattle. What in Seattle is giving it to us? From the work camp. Got it. Remember, you can only build those mines and quarries on the hills. Archer's going home. This envoy is being very, very careful. Even though their vision is horrible. I should wait for these guys, shouldn't I? Yeah, I probably should. I don't want to lose that envoy. It was way too expensive. I know you remember, chat, how long we spent doing that. Not yet. Hold. Now we can pop the... P so, once you finish the end of the tribal tree or any government tree, it'll say your government is ready for a peaceful revolution. Okay? We're also going to get the bonus of having plus two culture in our home world, homeland forever, plus 10 innovation, and you, we know how the innovation works. But here's what's crazy. Um, with the peaceful revolution, when we do get to the age of iron, we'll be able to use a cultural ability that says uh, peacefully go into the next uh, government. Pick a next government. Alrighty. Scouty boy. Oh! Sweden! Oh, those dirty... Dirty. They just Ford settled me. Now where am I going to build this outpost? I guess down here. Mr. Rusty, welcome back. Blood for the blood gods. I mean, to be fair. It would take them a while, and they have no walls or anything here yet. Logistics man says, Oh, wartime, just like in Civ. 
watching your audio videos on YouTube and then you pop up my Twitch recommendations. I love and hate the internet for this sometimes. Anyways, dropping by to say thank you for all the awesome stuff you're making. Have a nice stream. Thank you so much for stopping by. First time chatter, Leotron. Also, Logistics Man was also a first time chatter. Welcome both to the chat. Steal that with Freeburg and then make peace. Making peace in this game is not as easy. Once you're at war, you're at war. Peace is not... It doesn't come by easy means. Alright, we're fine. We're okay. Where's my other armies? Uh, 79. Okay, you're here. My 79's up there. You were doing some scouty. Look at this! A tribal camp way up here! We have reached the great unknown! Our ability to maneuver in here is quickly dwindling. And they're gonna get mad at us for being on their borders. It looks like this might be their capital. Man, by this point, I could have already had another... I'm gonna spend it. What are we gonna spend it on, though, chat? Cutting edge? More innovation points? The Eureka? Just not overthink likes the army. We have a couple of strong stacks. They're at 433. That might be a smart move. Of course, it getting to the next age is quicker than them might also help. I don't think we're at risk of war yet, so I think we are just going to go Eureka. Now look, already we can upgrade our food stores to a granary. Which is goes from 3 food to 15. Really reducing the amount of uh, farms you need. Which gives you more ability to start building up that production chain. It also increases our region level. But I, want, I think we're going to go with the temple. It gives us plus 1 culture and knowledge. Now, we're back in the Age of Iron. We could still go back here and grab these goodies. Here's the cavalry unit. Remember when we could have gotten the free cavalry, cavalry unit? Two ages ago? <laughs> and, I know some of you want to see this. The next three. Age of Plague, Age of Monuments, or Age of Kings. The default is Age of Kings. You got to get three civic monuments to unlock the Age of Monuments, and then, or Age of Plague, uh, which is having a bunch of crisis charges. The bad part about this is the enemy AI loves going into the Age of Plague. Do you need horses for cavalry? No, it's implied. Hmm. Once you get the ability to create cavalry, it's like you have everything that you need for them. Smelting would have been good with the mines, but it gave you pottery. Well, it's be yeah, because of the, uh, the bonus to the limestones. But... We need the bricks. I think it's back here, isn't it? No, community is all about the lumber. And they add us the kiln. I'm not too worried about that. Maybe go into officials. It gives us a free envoy. Unlocks the ability to spend wealth for culture. You can bribe barbarians to, dispar, um, to, to break them up. The market and the claim territory button. Can you do treaties? Um, not treaties? Yes. So maybe the envoy sending them to Sweden to make friends. 
Because you gotta, you gotta, before you can do any negotiations, you gotta send an envoy. All right, we'll get officials. And then we'll try to burn through this as quickly as possible. All right. I cannot believe they did that. Why are you guys so slow? Oh, by the way, now that we're in the Age of Iron, check this action out. You're going to love this. We now have crossbows. That army just went to a 128. Crossbow. We need another nine and a half warfare experience to upgrade the next one. Mm, so sexy, though. I think we'll just kind of poke around here. Because if this is all of our land, because we are basically butted up against it, we should be fine. Because we can backfill, we can backsettle all of this. One turn or so. We're gaining, we're only gaining one per turn outside of combat. All right, let's send you up. Yes. What do you got for me? And the further along in the game, and you still finding these uh, these tribal villages, the better the boost gets. 30 arts experience or 30 government experience. We're going to go with government. Although opening up a new domain would be great. But I'm not interested in founding a religion or... Um, you can also reduce unrest using arts. So I'm going to go straight up with the government experience. We have 56 now. See how we can do a violent revolution? Now that tribal was completely done, we can go violent revolution. Or now we can use our culture ability and do a peaceful resolution. But that's up here. So we have to unlock another culture thing first. Makes me wonder, how is Dallas doing? Has Dallas done anything yet? They are at population two. They're giving us a little bit more wealth. Yeah, they've doubled the amount of resources they're giving us. All right, uh, you guys can go up. So peaceful or violent. Yeah, violent causes a lot of chaos. But you switch, um, but you switch immediately. We are going to wait for a culture. We're going to use a cultural power on a peaceful revolution. So it's sort of like one of those double-edged sword. Because, yeah, it's going to be a peaceful revolution, so we're not going to incur any chaos from doing a violent revolution. But it's also costing us a cultural power. Whereas we could have done another Eureka. We could have done a Raisin Army. So, you know, there are some definite trade-offs there. So it's definitely a, uh, a thing. All right. Let's go. But chaos, Sister Aoife. Here's that archer. Nothing here. Their movement is so horrible. I suppose we can go up and around. It'll probably be quicker that way, considering the outpost is there. They're not there, so I can go. Spawn Prospector. See? Prospector in exploration. It wasn't the Pioneer. This is where we could have found gold in the hills. This is what I was thinking. Prospector versus a Pioneer. Classic Echo. Classic. Uh, we could spawn another Settler right now, but I don't want to waste all that. I want to wait until we can peacefully 
And then we'll be able to get a lot of our new government's cards or unlock a lot of our new government government immediately. How are we doing? We're still at eight improvements. If I destroy it, I'll get 25% back of its cost of 17. So that's what, five? Like four, maybe? Plus eight should be enough. So, yep, so now we're at 13. Ah, oh, we need one more. I was off by one. What's in exploration? We can spawn a scout or spawn the uh, prospector. All right, nothing for these guys to do. We're just keeping we're just keeping an eye on things. No big deal. Ah, oh, look at all this iron too. That was my home. And you stole it. We did some find some gold and some marble over here. This all unlocked during the Age of Iron. There is the tech that we're going to be able to... When is that? Yep. We're going to be able to expand our territories just by using Exploration XP. Did you claim that one city? We're working on it. I got to go slow because there's a barbarian camp here. And I need to destroy it first. So the barbarian doesn't eat my envoy. I guess we'll send this scout up and start searching over here. Look at all this nice production area. I don't know if I could have been quicker with my expansions. I think we did everything the way we were supposed to. Minus, you know, one error here or there. I'll pass this turn because I can't get through. Pass. Have I already been... This is just an island? We'll double check. Yep. The Pioneer going all the way down here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. This guy's going to destroy this and then meet them down there. That'll be fine. And there it goes. Sweden wants to start some issues. They declared hostilities, which means combat is allowed in neutral area. And the reason why they're mad at us? Who knows? Who knows? Where? I know there's a way you can see it. Recent actions. My recent actions. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I stayed close to their land. It would say, um, it would say that. And they didn't warn us either. They didn't say, hey, get off my land. Brr. So now I'm going to go cause hate and discontent content, and find some of them. You want hostilities? I'll give you hostilities. Look at those crossbows. Look at those crossbows hit. Ah, beautiful. Taking down the out... Uh, oh! Oh, we lost the Spearman! Oh, that is unfortunate. That was a bit unlucky. That's fine. That's fine. It's gonna be fine. I'm just going to uh, go pout and cry somewhere. All right. These now are doing good work. I know we needed that spearman, especially for the power score. All right. We can rush the three turns to be able to do the peaceful revolution, which we're going to do. We're going to pay the 87. 
Now we can do the piece of revolution. And now look, so we can cancel out of this or we can ch change governments. We have the governments available to us at this age are Imperial Dynasty and Kingdom. Oh, I think we're going to be going with Kingdom because it's it's more suited for vassals. We get cheaper settlers, cheaper envoys, and spears, and can generate resources off the backs of its new vassals at the cost of their prosperity. Whereas Imperial Dynasty is better for sort of the taller build. You get a palace. But you don't get any bonuses to it, like settlers or anything like that. But some of the bonuses you get in the Imperial Dynasty government buffs are better. So I think we're going to try Kingdom. I've gone Imperial Dynasty a couple times before. And you can see the differences here. See, like, minus 30% spawn settler domain power cost. Unlocks the seat of power. In install Satrap, plus 5% vassal prosperity per turn. That is beautiful. Remember, the more prosperity they have, um, the more they pay us. Generates knowledge from a vassal based on its population and prosperity. Reduces the vassal's prosperity. That's with a, a command. Yeah, we'll select it. And then look, we've already got 62 saved up. Spawns two spears units at a vassal for this conscript, conscript immortals. I think I'd rather go with the cheaper settlers, huh? And I want to get up to this install sat trap, so I'll wait and see for our 40 to be able to get the next one. Generates wealth and generates knowledge. These are domain powers, though. This is not a constant thing, because remember, they already as the standard, are donating wealth, knowledge, and all that culture and uh, improvement points. We could integrate for 25, but I don't think I, I want to integrate quite yet. I'm enjoying this vassal play. I don't know. Because the game is new, I'm not sure really what the good meta is as far as when do we want to... Uh, when would we want... to start turning our vassals into settlements. We do have hostilities, but I think we can still send an envoy in there. So I will send this envoy up. We got more public improvements. I'm going to take them. Here's that next quarry, because I want to save up next for this stone cutter for 19. It converts one limestone to one stone block for five production and gives us five production. In addition, it also gives us an engineering XP and two wealth. We could also do press and vats. That doesn't really do anything else. There's a cooking one that would be helpful. The plantation, two food, two cotton. Maybe that should be our next, is the plantations. Because our production's doing pretty good. Thanks to these two limestones. And we could start using the food. We can tell we're at a 132%. Our average needs are 166. We need to get out of enemy territory because they will be able to kill us. Oh, wow. Sweden had all of these monuments... And couldn't make an Age of Heroes happen?
This must be Spain up here. Jarifa in with a pendiculate. Thank you, Jarifa. Mm. Oh, we haven't gotten the reduced settler cost yet. This is the prospector. I need to be somewhat careful. Who are you? Russian Scout Cavalry. We finished officials, which is the reason why we had that free envoy. Unlocks the ability to spend wealth of Rush culture, which we did last turn. Claim territory, bribe, and the market building. We need to get some work done in the Age of Iron. We've already got some cheaper infrastructure, turning flour to bread. Aqueducts for the sanitation. Public quarters. And increase the number of towns the region can support. I'm not digging that. Catapult. That could be handy in a few... Uh, few oh, and... Stone walls and stone towers. 20 warfare experience. Positive influence to all, in all regions. Oh, Barbaria, I didn't even see your drink above Jarifa's uh, pendiculate. Cheers to you. I do want to try to get ahead on the the research, though. So going for one of the more inexpensive techs might be bonus. Like this infrastructure that's already been researched a bunch. Babarillo with the Tier 3 sub. Big sub coming out of Barbarito. I appreciate you. All right. Next turn. Let's clear this camp. I'm going to try to sneak this envoy in there. I just don't know if it's going to be possible. And smack. There we go. Give me a good bonus. I want a good one. 10 innovation. Brings up to 22 innovation or 150 wealth. I'll take the innovation. The barbarians have left behind ingenious looking curios in their camp. I like how they name the event. Because eventually you'll be able to just look at it and know what it's going to be. We're at 22 innovation now. Her turn. I still can't move this in there until that barbarian is gone. More scouting. Nietzsche. What would that be? No, that's probably still Nietzsche. That was probably a minor nation. That's what that was. I was like, that doesn't look like a Spanish name. All right, where's that other army? I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait. Of course, if I wait, I'm also just waiting for them to be able to spawn more barbarians. So I should probably just keep moving. Where are we thinking? I'm liking this scrub land right here. Barbario unlocks the fabled golden dumpster fire. Yeah, I like this tile. It has a hill on the second ring. Of course, if I put a city here, 
or a region here, I could also put another one over here. Yeah, I like that. We're going to do that. Isn't it in France? Yeah, I think you're right. Do you know if, if any iron is good around it? What do you mean, Lucky Wolf? Let's... I don't want to leave these scouts. I already have two scouts way up there. So I just want to use these as forward observers. We finally have enough warfare experience to upgrade this crossbowman. What about this army? This army needs the one that needs a little bit more. No, we'll be fine. Makes us a bit stronger. Oh, we're out of movement points there. All right, we have a lot of exploration points, and now we have the ability to claim territory. So I think we are going to claim territory outside of Seattle. And possibly this one here. The coal. Or we could do a prospector into one of these as well. Yeah, we'll grab the coal. For two more production if we can work it. Which, can we? Is more line. It takes the mine to work it. Which could give us coal and copper, which we're going to do. Wow. So we can get a total of four production out of that? Oh, is there any iron around the city that we're about to settle? I don't see any. There might be something in here. Which we're not settling a city, remember. Here's the way this is going to go. We settle an outpost. Now, with outposts, we can change them right back into um, pioneers. We can specialize the outpost in the future. It sort of just... Fends off the territory. It makes this little uh, nice road, which helps. You could also work these. If I came over here, I could improve these tiles. And then they would be available to us. Because there's things like imported and exported goods. I, let me see if I can show you. It'll pop up down here. Because you can import and export goods around your both domestically and foreign. So, for instance, if we needed, say, bread to complete our production of whatever, we could import bread. But now that we have an outpost here, there's a cultural ability that says absorb outpost. And it's going to take that outpost and absorb it. Which actually... I might be thinking of it different. It might make it a part of Houston. It might not make... It doesn't make it its own region. Let me see something. So this 30% settler cost, that is the 30%. It'd make more sense if I did the settler here. Excellent Sheep says, yeah, it makes it part of the city it's next to. Which means it, I would have been better served putting the like outpost up here. I'm trying to debate. 80, 80 experience to get all the way up here. But I want this vassal prosperity. So I'm going to save it. Okay. No units around. Funny how that happens. You want to declare hostilities. I will upgrade those folks. They'll be a little bit stronger. Bloop. This scout, we're about to... I'm about to um, show you the, a cool feature. 
How much experience? It's going to take 10 warfare experiences, but then I can turn this scout into a leader. A leader provides tactics. If you have a leader with a tactics of five and they only have a leader with a tactics of two, you'll get a 10% bonus in your attack and defense over them because you have a better leader. I normally don't like to do leaders until we get to like five army slots or six because it does take up a valuable spot, but this scout's not doing us much work anyways. All right, now we're going to move in here. I have to wait until uh, we have not moved. Use this as envoy. One of your vassals to increase integration. What am I thinking? Oh, no, it's going in it. No. Oh, right here. Vassalized minor nation. I have not, and I have moved this turn. I missed the little, uh, the other one. So we'll do that next turn. Let's go further north. Where are all these hostilities that Sweden wanted to, uh, start up, huh? Don't start no, won't be no. I think it's 10% per level of experience of tactics, but not sure. Hmm. That might be true. Now that you're saying that, I can kind of remember seeing in the tooltip plus 10%, plus 10%, plus 10%. That's why the Age of Heroes is so good, because everybody basically gets a free leader. A, a nice leader, too. In the Age of Heroes. Uh, so, to highlight that... Oh, we still don't even have enough. Never mind. Ten warfare experience. But now we can vassalize this minor nation. Boom! And now we have another vassal. It's not a lot of income, right? And that's because of this prosperity. But now I need to go wreck some shop here. Oh, that's a 35. That might hurt that spearman a little much. So I'm going to guard for a turn to heal up. Kakata! How are you? Welcome back. Still nobody's hanging around. Barcelona. Looks like this is the top of the map. That's pretty big so far, considering we've only gone, like, north to south. Uh-oh. Looks like our scout ran into some barbarians up here. Took some decent damage. I Looks like I might be able to get around them. Not this way. Oh, they're everywhere up here. I'll try to go sit on the hill. One, two. No, they're, I'm about to be crushed right now. I could regroup and bounce it back. But this is a lot of valuable scouting. I guess we have another guy down there. Yeah, we're going to regroup. Five expiration. Gets us out of trouble. How are we doing? We're doing great. We're playing some early access millennia. And, uh, you know, it's going phenomenal. Phenomenal. All right, back in Seattle. We just finished the temple for increased culture and knowledge. We can upgrade the town center into the seat of power, which will give us another government XP and a diplomacy XP. I don't think that's the priority right now. We can unlock the plaza and start getting our arts domain. 
Kalk. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. I'm thinking the granary. The 15 food is big time. We also have stores here, which increases production. Ooh. You know I'm going for production first, and then I'll go into the granary. Production is king! Oh, now Spain says my bo my forces are too close. Look, it was one turn. One guy riding a bus, not a big deal. Calm your horses. Generates wealth from a vassal based on population and prosperity. Generates knowledge. I like the idea of generating the knowledge better. Walls are a one-turn build. I would... I would! Uh, but, like, they, the only thing they do for us is provide defense, and no one's even close. So I don't think we have to worry about it. All right, this crossbowman can finally... What is going... Where did that other scout come from? Tell me Canterbury. That means the AI was building a scout. You are incompetent, AI. I don't want a scout. We have enough scouts. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to move this one out. Because remember, see how we're losing six gold per turn? I can't maintain an army this big with this amount of wealth. So I'm going to disband it. Didn't even recover one. Now we've got a two crossbow army. We need the warfare experience to be able to upgrade that... Um, this guy into a leader. I just realized we're losing so much money. We might have to disband something soon. Or get a merchant going. But we can't trade with Sweden because they're mad at us. Not this again? That's why EMAP was asking about the economy. <laughs> What Animon is this? It's the early access kind. Alright, that one's good there. I know what we can do. Generate more money. There's a plantation. By working that plantation, we're getting two cotton... And two food. The two cotton is worth two gold a piece. And I can build a plantation here eventually if I get some more improvement points. And I still want to get the improvement points to be able to build the stone cutter as well. Increase the budget or cut spending, says EMAP. We're not increasing the budget. We're increasing the GDP. Right? We're making more money. All right. Uh, it's because of these spearmen and the crosswomen are very expensive and our economy was not set. To Plus, look at this. How long are we going to sit above 10? We got 131 over 100. Give me my innovation event so I can get some cash. Yeah, Sweden doesn't want to pull that trigger because we're at 399 now out of 439. Here's some treaty works, but we haven't established an envoy yet, which is what we're trying to do with this little fella. Uh, I'm trying to get off your borders, but they're they're everywhere. What do you want me to do? Oh, I still have tea. I know you haven't probably paid much attention to this area of the screen over here. Uh-oh, what did I do? But it 
can show you a lot of quick info without having to scroll around to each of your, your cities or your vassals. It says, hey, we're working um, stores. We have one town, nine population, and 130%, 139% average need. I need to get that need, but I need to get some of these things taken care of. Next one is going to be the plantation for the economy. Let's go. Continue to scan the area. Looking for evildoers. Thank you for the zoom fix, Jerifa. Um, we are... How much to upgrade them to a leader? 10 warfare experience. Did we never... Oh, we are we do have an income of one per turn, regardless of combat. Okay. Because we, we built the encampment. I can go in here and then we can open negotiations. So now when we go back to the negotiation screen with Sweden, you can see we have the check mark. Um we are allowed to do all of these things, send gifts, improve relations. You know, demand things. They actually have a positive relationship with us now. Big, yeah. So we could restore neutrality. I'll wait and see if they do it next turn. They may even try to restore neutrality. I'd really like to have that other scout link up with those. Finally, went from 22 down to 6. All of the nations must surrender the might of the kingdom of the United States. The kingdom's armies enact its will. Pre-gunpowder units get plus times 1.2 attack versus militia units. So this is not a forever bonus because... After we get gunpowder units, that bonus just goes away. Whereas the 450 gold might be helpful, especially considering our budget woes. Do we get something from them restoring opposed to you restoring it? No, I don't believe so. 450 wealth. Talking about the peat neutrality. Oh, uh, now we've declared hostilities. Spain's mad because I can't get around their silly, silly borders, which means they're going to be coming for my scout. I'm trying to leave. Stop building your city so close. Let's go mess up this fella. <laughs> Look, two hits. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Oh, I love it. I want it and keep improving our productions. Because the faster we can do that, the better. All right, here's the promote to leader. It's only a leader one. But now we have ye old leader. They have a tactics of one plus one. Because I guess they're veteran level one, so it works. All right, Sweden, I'll ask for it. What am I going to do with you folks? I guess you'll just guard there. Can I get this scout up and around through Sweden's area? I might be able to, because I think we're going to lose this one. Sweden rejected our diplomatic action of trying to restore neutrality. Although we are determined to continue our efforts to mitigate the differences between our two nations, we have not yet reached that stage. Well spoken. Grasslands. Let's go up through here.
North! North, I say! My goodness, they have another city. Oh, this is somebody else. Oh, this is Russia. Wow, we had a great spawn. Down here in the middle of nowhere. Finally, we've reached the culmination of 300 years of travel. Look how fast we bulldoze this place. Nice. 30 warfare experience or 30 art. We'll take the 30 art. It unlocks another domain for us. And there might be some goodies for us in there. Immigration. We can increase the region's population by one. Must be a, reg must be a regional ca capital with 10 population or fewer. I kind of like that. Uh, we're growing in two turns anyways. Promote cultural exports. Target a friendly vassalized territory to increase its prosperity. We're already doing that. So Dallas here. Notice the incomes. How goes the conquering? I've been fitting be I've been flitting between streams. All the coolest people are streaming at the same time today, and I just couldn't choose. Well, I appreciate you still flitting. <laughs> Congren's going well. We're doing all right. You see, they built a lookout. It's the only thing Dallas has built since its inception. One lookout. But it's nice to have the lookouts. It also means we can do capital attacks now. But what we're going to do, we're going to take the arts. We're going to promote cultural exports. Now look at our incomes. They've increased, which is kind of nice. Diplomacy. I'm gonna spawn a merchant. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get their income up there. Let's go through here. Oh, there's Spain. We might be able to kill them too. Of course, they have a leader in that bunch. I just noticed. My gosh, all their places are tight together. Finally finished infrastructure, giving us aqueducts. Ovens, the improvement. Two flour to two bread, going from times six food to times ten food. Public quarters, which can pack more housing but increases unrest. Permanent upgrade. All right, what do we got now? Horses is now only eight because everybody went and got it. So we're going to grab it on the cheap. Yeah. It'll give all of our regions more influence, too. Um, you can see our regional... We are still pushing based on... It's probably based... I don't think it's based on population. I don't know what this number is based upon. I don't know. But all of our... Even our vassals are pushing it, too. I'm going to revert this pioneer. Because I should have done this a hundred turns ago. <laughs> we can put the Pioneer up here. And then get access to all these fish for Seattle. Excellent Sheep says territory expansion is bad on influence. Or is based on influence. Oh, uh, which is based on this number right here. Very nice. Thank you, Sheep. Sheep has been drinking in the... Think about the main... The first embargo lifted yesterday. One of the, the first major embargo. How long have you been following the game, Sheep? Because your knowledge of it seems to be pretty good. Says, dude, I cannot wait for this game to be released. It's good. I played at least 50 hours of the demo. Wow, that's a lot for the demo. What was it? Like two ages or three ages in the demo? Gloom and Raged. With the tier one for 12 months. Happy Echoversary. Chat, you know what to do. You know what to do. It's an Echoversary. 
Let's see, let's see some parties or something in the chat to celebrate Gloom and Rage and their one year Echoversary. Let's go back over. I need to get a settler over here. That means I, need, I do need more settlers. Maybe we should teach. Oh, no. And they're spearmen. Spearmen against my horses? I'm going to lose that. So we're going to go into the woods. Into the unknown. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let's keep going north. And we have found the Northern Sea. Thank you, chat, very much for celebrating Gloom and Raged and their one year echoversary. Let's. Oh, the Pioneer is going. Yeah, I'm thinking right here. No, it's got to be right here because it's going to turn into a town. So all these fish improvements, I'm going to want to capitalize on. And I can't improve anything on a mountain. So this is where the town's going to go. Soil Blackfeather says, no, earworm, how dare you? You're welcome. <laughs> oh, it's so good. All right, we got 19 improvement points. I can't do... What do we want to do? We could improve... Get four production from that. What can I say except you're welcome? Or we go to stone cutter and get five production for turning one of the limestones into to blocks. So it seems to me the stone cutter would be the priority. The other issue though is look at Seattle chat. We're hurting on not hurting on food and housing. We need more of it. I wish I remembered the tech that can turn meat. There's something to do with meat. It's like a smokehouse. I need the smokehouse to be able to multiply all that meat that we're earning and get into... Uh... Let's show you, all the, show you all the meat, chat. All the meat we're earning and multiply that food production. Amy asks, have you ever been looking for something on your desk that was right there and your eyes just don't see it until you got up and looked somewhere else, came back to the desk, confused for it to be right there all the time? Isn't the thing you're building helping with food? No. The stone cutter. Oh, no. We wanted the plantation. That's what it was. Plantation. That will help with food. We're up to 125%. We're going to need another midden. Is this a midden? No, this is a dwelling. But if I can get the production high enough, instead of building improvements to do that, I can build them in the city. Like the granary. Now I just need some housing. Where can I get some housing in here? There's got to be some housing in here somewhere. Seattle Smokehouse? Nah, that needs to be in Houston or Dallas, says Amy. This is why an this is why this game is so deep. Because just knowing where everything is. There's a library for plus one to knowledge. Look at this. Converts paper into manuscript. Which is beautiful. The only thing I'm not sure, and maybe Sheep knows this. Public housing, I think, is the first one you can get. It might be in another age. If I use the one paper and turn it into one manuscript, I lose the eight wealth coming from the one paper, I'm assuming. Because it's converting it. Sheep says, yes, you do. Thank you, Sheep. This is Furnace, Weaponsmith. Can turn those ingots into spears. Toolsmith. Uh, is this toolsmith bricks or is it ingots? It's ingots as well. 
The copper line's a little bit better, in my opinion, than the uh, the other line. What do we have here? Mill? Clay to bricks in the kiln. Logs. The crane. I kind of need the crane, don't I? What are we getting right now, horses? Should I go? Should I double back for that? I don't know. Lots of choices, boss. Lots of choices. Order research. Ooh. Greater or equal to 50% prosperity. It, but it re reduces the vassal's prosperity. I'm not doing that. I'm not trying to reduce their prosperity. I'm trying to boost it up. So we'll keep it going this way. Pioneer, continue to move. Here is another kill. I'll be able to highlight the tactics now. See how we have tactics of two? They have zero tactics, so we're getting a plus 20% combat bonus. Front of us says, how is this game? It's amazing. I've been really enjoying it. I got about 25, 26 hours into it now. We've talked about... Um, a lot of people are making the Civ correlation, which is common with it being a 4X, but Millennia changes so many things. Really amps the, the strategy. There's production cues. The ages are completely different than what we would consider eras in Civ. All right, these folks are going sideways. Oh, no, no, no. 116. It's time to go. We just got to get out of here. We're about to get pincered. All right, cultural power. Notice that because we unlocked the arts domain, we now have access to propaganda, the culture power propaganda, which allows you to reduce chaos. I'm thinking Eureka. 20 knowledge. Oh, no, I wanted to save it for the outpost, didn't I? I got to save it for the outpost. I got to get the pioneer there. Zoldan. I've shown you like 17 things that were not inspired by Civ. Zoldan's giving me the rib shot. Where's that pioneer? There you are, you sneaky little thing. Boom. For instance, these awesome little production changes. Production chains. We can go from wealth using the cotton and make fabric. That We have that ability, don't we? Nope, not there. Yeah, you have the option of going from paper to manuscripts for knowledge or... You can go to, or you got to go to logs to get the paper, then paper to get the, um, to manuscripts. Where was, I know we've seen it. Maybe we haven't seen it. You're looking for the weaver. That sounds true. Yeah, I think the weaver's in the next train, um, in the next age, too. All right, next, uh, we're going to keep moving this fella. Oh, we might be able to get out of here. Let's go into the forest. We're not using that culture power yet. We are getting a decent amount of culture, though. Your forces are too close to our borders. I suggest you send them elsewhere. Wah, 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 wah. What am I going to do with this? We could bounce them. We could regroup. It'll cost us five exploration. But this is a pretty good leader right here. A veteran level three.
nothing else to explore over here. We don't have shipbuilding yet, or we could just enter the water. We're going to regroup. I think your outpost needs to border the city to be able to add it in with the culture power, but I'm not sure. Well, we'll find out. We'll do it for science. For science, sheep! For science! Alright, that, we're good here. We're actually making two gold now. Oh, you had to regroup them both? Oh, that's pricey. Let me try sending this one just away. Yeah, they're chasing me, but they're not going to be able to catch up. Look at these olives here. I need to get a settler there. Do we spawn the settler now? Or do we wait? No, I'm going to wait because I wanted the vassal. I wanted this right here. Sat trap for, va for vassal prosperity. Houston, why are you in Houston? Oh, that's where you got z zoomied back to? Not yet. Two turns until we finish the granary. Remember, we did a back-to-back -back production, which is why it's been a minute. Yeah, I'm going to keep this these folks here because I think the region is going to go right here. This is, I could probably put two regions here. That would be the smarter play. It would help movement around my empire because one of the issues is, is I've been trying to settle all these resources. And so they're a little bit further away than what they should be. I could do another settler right here too. That might help connect these with roads. Because if I don't soon, Sweden will. Not yet. Pioneer. Next turn, I'll be able to put the outpost right there, and then we'll see. We are just going to guard this area. Long lost buddy, how are you? Do I have any other... There's. Where's this scout? Way up here. Oh, they're stuck. Because of the expansion. So we definitely have to regroup that one. But I don't... I feel some kind of way about it too. I feel good about it. Because now that it's been regrouped... They can now have a... Um, we can have a threesome of horses. Which makes them a little bit stronger. And be able to absorb more damage. When they're on the road of exploration. Not yet. Technology. We finished horses. Gives us 20 free warfare XP. Increases influence in all regions. And unlocks the cavalry unit. Alright, what's cheap? Smelting is cheap. Construction is not cheap. But I think I'd rather construction. And I think I'd rather scribes. Just for the library. And it's cheap. Let's get it. All right, now we can set the outpost. I can use the cultural power to absorb the outpost. Absorbs one of your outposts and all of its territory into an adjacent region, becoming a level two town. This requires the territories of both the outpost and the region to be touching and the region to be able to support an additional town. Okay, so they do have to be touching, which is not actually too bad because I just have to buy this tile and this tile. And then we'll be able to absorb it. I'd like to learn more about these outpost things, though. I can put a trade post, one additional generated goods from this tile. Because I don't know what we're actually getting there. 
I don't see what boost. Because it doesn't look like I can work these tiles. And it might be just further down in the game. We're not due vassal integration. Now we're finally have enough diplomacy to unlock the Olympic Games, which is a diplomacy cultural power, but it's a strong one. Now, whenever we want... Oops. Where'd it go? Oh, no, it's right here. It's a cultural power. When we do it... Well, I guess we're just going to do it because we can't do the absorb outpost anyways. It's going to give us a bunch of experience in all these domains. Or do I want to do the Eureka? All right, well, let me put it to you this way. If I did the Olympic Games, it says like variety in here. It gives a variety of XP rewards. And the more you have the Olympian chain unlocked, the better the rewards. But what would I do with any of these experiences anyways? So I think right now, the best thing I want is more knowledge. It's not a lot. It's only 20. But that's five turns, four turns of knowledge. That might be the difference. That might be the difference. And then in five turns, we could do it again and really try to push it. Push it real good. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, we finished the granary. So now our food's at 173%. We need housing, but we don't have access to it quite yet. I'm thinking the government XP might be nice. Civic Monument is a one-time border um, expansion of 100 influence and plus six more influence. There's the market, more diplomacy, meeting halls, diplomacy, watch reduces unrest. All right, let's grab the upgrade to see the power. And then I'm going to go palisade walls just to get it out. No, I don't need it. I keep saying I don't need it and it. Then I'm going to go Civic Monument. Now, how can I milk more production here? I suppose with more population. In order to get more population, I'm going to need more housing. So I'm... Oh, there's the public quarters. It's only for unrest. Of course, we have unrest right now, and I'm blind and didn't even see it. We're at level three unrest? No. No. We are protesting. Uh-oh. Let's get some volunteers in Seattle. I completely forgot to look at this. They are going to provide... How much unrest does Spearman provide? Four unrest prevention. Yeah, and our population is only causing two and a half. So the unrest will go down. And then I will, I would need an extra garrison unit because the public's quarters by themselves are for unrest, but it would save tiles, which it's not going to matter anyways, because we're expanding our borders. So I'll just put a standard dwelling right here, which is another improvement, by the way, which is uh, for Albany. I suppose one of these days we got to make that a better town as well. Now we're at 200%. That unrest will start falling. You're staying there forever. Look at that expansion. Where did Sweden come from? What do you think? What do you think you're doing down here? Oh, Dallas has already got a population of three. All right. Are you making any improvements? That'd be nice too, you know. Do we get the settler? No, I said we're going to wait because I want the sat trap. Hmm. 
you are meeting up with your other scout buddy. Look, we're all friends! News from abroad, Russia and Spain are at war. Good luck with that. All right, unrest is going down. Another way to do this, by the way, the city guards are really good unrest prevention. You see, their unrest suppression is eight, whereas a standard unit's like four. Did you run the um, Olympics? Could you weight the competitions, the nations in your favor? Big pendiculate and drink from Jibo. Oh, Jibo taking care of the streamer. Thank you, Jibo. Mm, that one's empty. Time to move on to this Perrier. Now, I'm, I know what you may be wondering. Um, is Echo sponsored by Perrier? No, I am not. Uh, but I still drink a lot of it. All right. That was a big stretch, Amy says. And that would only be two turns. Uh, I, I don't need to worry. The unrest is going down. Right now, it's only going down by 1.5 per turn. Oh, look. And you, when you are at, at levels of unrest, you do reduce your efficiency. Notice we're only at 90% efficiency, which that hurts. We're also now at 11 population, which means we need sanitation, which means we are not building this civic monument next. We are building the aqueduct to get the sanitation bonus. Yeah, agreed, sheep. City guards would be the best. But right now, I don't really, I don't think I want to sacrifice. I'm going to get another public improvement to get more of our wonderful little improvement points. I wish it let me improve the vassal's things for even more goodies. All right, what are we grabbing? What are we grabbing? An oven. We don't have any flour. We could get some more meat. There's the weaver. We've had the weaver. Converts to wool. Oh, yeah. And the cotton is already only correct providing wealth anyway. So the weaver is just a common sense move. Let's find out where we can build the weaver. Where'd you go? Right here. Oh, any of them. I'll do the scrublands over here. Boom, Weaver in. Big monies now. So now you can start to see that production chain going in. Instead, you can see the 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 cotton is being used. And it was being consumed for two wealth. Now the cloth is for six wealth. So beautiful. Pumpkin of the pie, welcome. Amy says, if Nestle or Perrier are at PAX, you should totally show them your clips. I don't think they are at PAX. I've seen most of the list. I've gotten hundreds of emails. I don't know. I'm going to see this year because I got a creator pass for PAX. I have gotten hundreds of emails. Hey, you should stop by our booth. Please uh, set up a meeting. Set up an appointment so we can show you this game. But... The only big games that I've seen that are going to be there is Final Fantasy XIV. There's a couple of companies that are big that I want to stop by, but... All right, where are we going here? Echo is a cool kid, Meow. I've always been a cool kid. What? <laughs> All right. Oh. Three more... We're almost there. Viral illness. Sanitation satisfaction is less than 50%. And because of that, 
we're getting three crisis plague charges. We get up to 20 and then we advanced. We're now in the age of plague. That's not good. We don't want the plague, folks. Where is... The aqueduct is seven away? Ugh. I don't have access to the midden yet, do I? I do have access to the midden, but it wants 32. So that's another example of how you can use an improvement on the map. For instance, in this case, for four sanitation. Or I can build a building like the aqueduct. I'll put the mid... It's not going to be a while before I even get 32 points. We're only gaining two per turn. Can you build faster with culture? I don't think so. I'll unlock it for 92 gold. We can, we can host an Olympic Games. The problem is we would be heading straight into, an, even if we were the first, if we were the first, we'd be going straight into the uh, Age of Plague. Because you only need 20 and it looks like we're getting three per turn. Oh, but I might be able to get some more engineering points from the Olympic Games. Let's do it. Exploration, warfare, and diplomacy. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I didn't I didn't want your goodies anyways. I heard if you get vaccinated with cowpox, you turn into a cow. <laughs> oh, did you learn that on the internet? I guess we'll spend some of this to get some uh, of our Olympian stuff. I will get the Hippodrome because it's a fun unlock. Reduces unrest and gains culture. And because remember that earlier uh, event we got? There is the Torchbearer buff for plus two to diplomacy. So the Hippodrome becomes the hippo drone becomes super, super powerful. Exploration. We can claim territory. I don't really care about doing that. I need improvement points. I could reduce a bunch of this farm. All this food. All right, we'll see. Yeah, we're at six now. And if we get to 20, if we get to 20 and we set the age, we're going into a plague. Anonymous gifter with five gifted subs. I appreciate you, anonymous gifter. Big hugs to you. Excellent Sheep says, I think you can still choose any of the ages. You just need the crisis point to be able to choose the age of plague. I was un I was under the assumption it was the other way. Can I see crisis charges? No. Let me see if it'll give I can't see it here yet. Age of blood does work like that, says sheep. Okay, what happens at the end of my little crisis things? If it was if it was greater than 50%, we'd be doing better. And we'd only be getting one crisis plate charge. But we just, we gotta wait until we can get a midden. I mean, I'm fine with that. You do you, boo. Let's go here. The plague age crisis grows stronger as you neglect sanitation. If it reaches a maximum, you will be forced to set a plague age as the future. Yep. 
I, I, there's nothing. What are we at? 14? And for some ridiculous amount, it wants 32 for a midden? When is this thing going to be done? Five turns. Where can I get bonus production from? I, I don't think we can. I can get the prosperity finally. Yeah, but we got to realize now I could just say, nope, I am not going to level up into the next stage. I could wait for somebody else. I could wait for somebody else to set the age. Unless if any nation does this. Hmm. Yeah, if it was a money thing, there is a... Is this in scribes? No. There, you unlock an ability to be able to rush production. But I don't know where it is. I think it's in this next, in the fourth age. Oh, no. <gasps> it's in community. I got to get community right now. I can rush the production. We're at 15. I'm not going to make it. The kingdom of the United States flourishes due to the continued payments from local towns. Plus four from farming towns of wealth or 450. I don't think I'm going to have too many towns. So 450 seems to be good, especially considering I want to rush production. I don't know how much the... Four on the aqueduct. Oh, you know what I can do? No, there's no way to get knowledge from here. We just better hope that they aqueduct once we finish it. Because this turn, we should unlock that research. The Plague Age Crisis. If you allow your plague to live in filth any longer, you will be forced down the path of Aegis Plague. What do you want me to do? Where? Next age is Age of Kings. If it's Brazil. It's Age of Plague if it's Sweden. So that answers our question, but watch this. We just spin we unlocked the community. So that means we have the crane, which will give us some more improvement points. Saw pit for more engineering points. Kiln. A mill. Ooh. We're getting wheat right now from those farms, right? We can turn those to flour using the mill. But now, I'm pretty sure we are. Yep. I can rush it for 390. Now our sanitation's at 200%. Which this is all for a moot point anyways, because we're not catching Brazil. I mean, we still have another... Well, we're finishing Scribes this turn. And Brazil's 20% of the way there. There's Scribes, which gives us access to the library. We have 20 turns away. Brazil's at 27.54%. They are 11 turns away. What can we build? A library? 1100 for a library. The Hippodrome with huge unrest suppression and culture. Hippodrome's only 480. Let's do it, and then I'll go into the library.
Look at now we're gonna be growing like gangbusters. Is there a maximum number of turns you can play until and you until you unlock everything? I do not know. Um uh, yeah. Connor425 in with the follow. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Just a reminder, everybody, I have a pinned comment at the top if you are interested in looking at the game. Um, I have my personal link there, so that way Paradox knows that I helped point you in that right direction. You know what we're going to do, too? We're going to get some lumber online. Boom, there's a forester. See, there's our domestic exports. Diplomacy, no. Warfare, we have a lot on the warfare front. We could build an entire another stack. Order research. Generates knowledge from a vassal based on the population and prosperity. It's probably not enough. No it's probably not a lot of knowledge. Maybe Brazil will slow down. No, they're 10 turns away. Russia with some hostilities. Bring it. Rus Spain and Russia have ended their war. We could get that next settler. It's 31. I'll wait for the 31 then. Look how much culture we're getting per turn. This is the benefit of not having too many um, capital regions because you don't, you don't have to pay the upkeep. Brian Matt says, so how do you rank this against other big Civ builders or is it too soon to tell? Um, no, I have got about 25 hours in it. I am very excited about this title, Brian. Very excited. It is... It's bringing a lot to the Forex space. And so far, 98% of everything I've heard about it um, from other creators um, has been nothing but positive. So I think the game is going to do well. And you know with Paradox, they're going to support it for a while. Where did we get Chaos from? Were we generating chaos because of the viral illness? I don't have the 450 to pay. Well, spawns two barbarian warlords at each region for all nations. Ugh. It's not a big deal because, well, we're gangsters. I do need to get these guys back, though, to deal with it. Let's go up here to deal with this one. No big deal. Hopefully we don't lose one of our vassals. Okay, yeah, our cities are strong enough to withstand it. So that's a 44. That's a barbarian warlord. And you can see that our cities in this age, we now have City Militia 3. Hence, they're dressed a little differently and they, they're a little bit stronger. So we don't have to worry about these guys quite as bad. Let's go crush this dude's soul. This will be fun just to watch. <laughs> Get wrecked, fool! Whee! Careful, the barbs near your capital don't go for your outpost. What is this up here? <gasps> no! You called it, sheep. I didn't even see it. Our poor outpost. The pioneer was just sitting there. Okay, we're still above 150, but we're growing very fast <laughs> is sort of the issue. We got 20 improvement points. 
I want to do more. Did we put the weaver in? We did put a weaver that is able to work two cotton, but we still have two more cotton. So let's get in, in another weaver. There's the scribe. We could go with the saw pit. Turns three logs into three lumber, but we, we don't have three logs. We're only getting one log. Better yet, we can go with the mill. Turn the two wheat into times six food. I want to emphasize, this is the last point I'm going to emphasize of why this is so much different than Civ. We have two wheat here right now being consumed for three food. One wheat is three food, so two wheat is three food. I'm now going to put down a mill. How, how, me, I also want to look at this real quick. Uh, we're at 37 food right now. Now we're at 41 food. Because we took that, what it basically amounted to be six food. And now we have flour. Two flowers for 12 food. And then we can take that flour and put it in an oven. And we get bread. I don't think we have access to the oven yet. Yes, we do for 24. And then that times six food will turn into times 10 food. Kind of noobish with a glass of Angel's Envy. Good for you. Happy Friday. Was there something you could do to get more knowledge, not culture? Not really. I mean, right here, I could rush this. Grab a Eureka for 16 knowledge. But we're still not going to be close. We're still in, like, fourth place. We have the library coming up. We don't have the money to rush it. That's still three turns away. Kind of noobish. Noobish says it's been a week, so it's worth a glass or two. Good for you. I'm sorry you had such a tough week, but I'm glad you're able to sit back and relax now. Uh, cheaper envoys? I'll wait. I'll get the line unit defense boost from Climax. <laughs> All right. I'm going to save it out. Because Noobish has got me wanting a little bit of bourbon. <laughs> we had, I think we had fun. We held decent numbers today. Not Ani numbers, granted, but decent numbers. And I hope everybody enjoyed taking a look at Millennia. One last reminder that I do have a link pinned. Or you can hit exclamation game. Um, exclamation game to see the link. And that link will go to Paradox pages, and it just lets Paradox know that, hey, um, Echo sent me here. So when you're looking at the game, or if you decide to pre-purchase. Zimmy says it was fun. I'm glad to hear that, Zimmy. Next stop, 12 hours Echo. Yeah, that's another good reminder. On Sunday, it's 12 hours of Echo. Okay, it's 12 hours of Echo. It's going to be nuts. I don't know what all games I'm going to be playing. I know we're going to be playing some Ani, obviously. But I can't play... Well, I probably could play Ani for 12 hours. I don't know. We'll see. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I might do like a half and half or three different games or that sort of thing. Why do you do Sundays instead of Saturdays at Slight Speed? Um, Saturdays are my only day off. I stream three times a week. I create content two times a week. And then I have one business day that allows me to respond to all the emails that I get um, for content creation. In the past few weeks, it's allowed me the time to actually play Millennia. Jarifa says, maybe a bit more of Millennia. I'd like to. I'd really like to. I still have to look for the health of the channel, but I mean, 115 on the Friday is not bad. So I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. I am going to check the Millennia channel. See who else is on. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. 
we're gonna go say hi to somebody else playing millennia since everybody here was kind of intrigued so gaius raid channel the credits are decently updated I appreciate everybody for coming out. I appreciate all the love and support. And I hope all of you have a great, great weekend. I'll see you Sunday. Remember, 11 a.m., not the 1, not the, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, but 11 a.m. Eastern. All right, the raid is up. I'm going to roll these credits. Much love to all of you. Thank you all for coming out. Have a great weekend. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon.